Oops. This is Alu Nick has. Why am I doing this? Alu Nick has. Alu Nick has English name. We should put. Yeah, let's say that. English name. There's a lot of. Are there a lot of people in the waiting room? Not really, right? Okay, there's two people. They can wait. We'll let them in in a few minutes. Um, English name, question mark. So the question, the answer will be Wendy. Wendy. Okay, what other name should we put? Dorothy? Wendy, Dorothy, Queenie. Queenie? Yes, yeah, Sarah. And Sarah, okay. All right, next question. We have what five radio, so far. What radio station did she play on play a silhouette dance? Should we have that as a true or false question? Yeah, we could do that because you know what I'm talking about, the silhouette that, you know, on they do okay. that in the background. So, in the background. Okay, so, and she did it at a radio station? Yeah, she did it on 93.5. It's on her Instagram. Okay, true or false? Um... Olu Nike did a dance on a radio. A silhouette dance. Radio, okay, radio show. Radio, yeah. Radio network or commercial. Well, how do you do a, how okay, do you do so a back, silhouette dance let on me a radio Let me tell show? you what it is. Back in the day, 93.5. When uh -huh. it used to show online, it would you would have oh, dancers okay. in the background. Silhouette yeah, is what? Silhouette. Is that how you spell silhouette? S I L O. Is not H O? I think so. Yeah, I have it down. H O. Yeah. Um, I think T T O. Okay, and T T. No, it's E T T E, right? Silhouette. You have it in yes, it's E T T E. You are correct. Okay, so that's a true answer. Um, okay, we're on number seven. Another question is um, a natural athlete and play a lot of sports as a youth. Um, she attended you. What did she study at the University of Toronto? What? Or did? just do a true and false. Did she study um, something at? Yeah, but she did African studies. That's very important. <laughs> okay, sorry. Just so that it ties into what she's doing now, and then we can fall, we can go off of that and say, okay, have you done any African plays or movies? What did she study in? I don't have any answer, any other answers with the Caribbean answer. Um. So I counted on her actual Instagram, how many times she's been to Jamaica, but mm -hmm. I, I missed 10, I think 10, 10 or 15 posts. So I don't know the proper number. Um, when she was in Jamaica, she was getting like her legged and stuff scrubbed. So I was going to say, what is her favorite, one of her favorite things to do in Jamaica, be at the beach, um, get a scrub, get, um, have her favorite food, but I don't know. Um, okay. We're good for now, if anything. Um, okay, so that's question number seven. We can do three more and we're done. And we should be ready to rumble. Okay, let's look at what she has here. Let's see. raised in Jamaica, which um, we can talk about her being an athlete. Was she um, athletic in Jamaica? Pardon me? Uh, was she athletic in Jamaica? Denzel Washington gave me the first advice to study drama. Okay, okay. Um, we're going to put that as a, as a regular question. And who, who gave, gave her, her advice? You, we're on sync. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to run smooth. Her, 
advice oops advice on what was it again advice to study drama okay so yes or no was she a backup dancer oh i have to i have to dental washington is the answer the next one could be oprah Oh, I'm typing as we're speaking, so give me just a few seconds, Denzel Washington. No problem. Okay. Now we need more names. Um, uh, Oprah. Oprah. Um, ah, what is oh, R A H? And then I need two more answers. Will uh, Smith. Okay, Will Smith. And who's the last one? I'm trying to think of a woman. Um, what is her name? Frigman. The lady who did, um, she made her money with hair products. What's that lady's name? Um, I can put Jessica Simpson just to make it funny. <laughs> They're going to know. They're going to know. Yeah, it's fine. But the answer is Denzel, right? So it's either. Or, <laughs> they're going to be like, is it Denzel or is it Will? Is it Denzel? Is it Will? So. All right. So uh, question seven. Okay. So we need one more. Is it going to be true or false? Yeah, true and false. Uh, was she a backup dancer? Can you believe that she's already in and waiting to be let in? But I'm not letting her in yet. We're going to let more people come in. So let her stay there for we a minute. We have to have our music going, you know? <laughs> We're going to have it going. Okay, so um, I need a question, true or false? Yeah. Uh, oh, she used oh. to be a backup dancer. Um, oh, you can talk about the, the 90s era for hip-hop and R&B. Is it true that she hold likes... Hold on, back up, dancer. And it's true, right? Yes. And then I'm going to put another troll false. Olunike has a son. No, she has a daughter. Yes. Okay, before you do that, just give me one second. I can just so that's get that 10 water. questions. We've got 10. questions. I think we're good. Yay! Okay, so it's and it's seven o'clock. Okay, it says question missing. Oh, fix for what? What did I miss? Question isn't complete. Okay, we can do another true or false question right here. Okay, what do you have so far? I don't remember. <laughs> okay, so did you put the last one, the one that I yeah. told you, which is the the nineties, the nineties era for hip hop and R and B? Okay, her. What is her favorite? Is her favorite hip hop? Oh it, no, this question here has to be an R and B question. It has to be a true or false. I mean, so um, her favorite favorite genre is what was it again 80s uh 90s okay so since it, the answer is 90s we'll put a wrong answer is the 80s R B, and the answer is false okay there was something else i had to check up on I think I'm done. Let me see. I didn't tell you time now. Um, oops. <sighs> All right. So we got this. The validating. Um, yay, the cahoots. No, we're, not playing. we're not playing right now. So the Kahoot is there. Okay, so we got that. Okay, I got it. I got it. Um, okay. So, Gladys is in. Darcy, me music, please. Okay, are we ready now?
It's going lovely, couldn't be any better than this. <laughs> Down, oh no, I got to keep on moving. Hello, Michelle. Hi, Gladys. Polona. Uh, What's up, TJ? Was you on the post? Uh, <laughs> uh, not me, the post <laughs> Hi, Michelle. How are you? I'm good. Ooh, hi, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle, where you at? Hello? Are you home? I'm in Brampton. You're in Brampton? You're in Brampton and I don't know that you're in Brampton? <laughs> wow, Michelle. Hi, TJ. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? Hello, hello, Moko. Our guest is on the way. Her flight is landing at the Toronto um, International Airport right now. So she's getting screened. <laughs> right? So she, but she doesn't need a COVID test, right? Because this is virtual. So she's going to be, she's going to be here. She's, um, she's going to be getting into her cab. And she's going to be driving on over here. So just give us a few minutes. Enjoy one of her favorite ring, um, genres in music. It's the um, 90s hip-hop and R&B. That's one of her favorite genres. And we're going to be talk, speaking with her very shortly. Like I said, she is here. We're just waiting for her cap to come in. Okay? So how's everybody doing? COVID. Like, the numbers are going down, you know. And um, that's good news. That's something so the numbers are going down sorry go ahead the numbers are going down so that's that's what we want to hear the news um i think right now they're doing a lot of benefits for sick people um, well not sick people but like people who have to care for someone who's sick or whatever people are able to get like sick benefits now so that that's a good thing that they're doing um I know where everybody here is calling from, but for those that don't know in the chat, can you just drop in where you're calling from? If you're in Canada, uh, TJ, oh. hey, yeah. it looks like you're with the Toronto Raptors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I'm in LA, you know, so but in, the, in the, LA, the, the, the LA in Toronto, you know. He's <laughs> representing. He's representing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, that's great. So we're gonna be we're gonna be starting real soon. Um, we'll just have like two minutes 
and we'll jump right in. Our guest is here, so we have... So yeah, I mean, these days the weather's been pretty good out here, you know? Today it's been a little bit off, but I mean, we can't complain. <laughs> what, Michelle? No, okay. it, you're complaining? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> you're complaining. I need the warm I get weather it. now. <laughs> it's about time. It's about time. Yes, yes. Enough now. <laughs> yeah, as soon as this... and it's COVID and it's cold. You can't win. That's what it seems like, right? Yes. That's what it seems like. And... Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. And the craziest part here is okay. everybody is just dreaming of when this is going to stop and when they're ready to just start their their day, you know? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> and I'm in that same category as well. I'm just looking forward to getting out of here as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Wow. Hi, Moko. Moko. How's it Thanks going? for showing us your face. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think you can. Yeah. Moko, we can't hear you, man. Oh, you can't can you hear me now? Oh, we can hear you now. You were speaking in your mind before, man. <laughs> it's not active, but we need to hear you speak out, man. Oh, I'm sorry, my brother. This is one of our superstars here, you know. <laughs> How you guys doing? <laughs> Just, Great, yeah. fabulous. Yes. You excited for the screening of uh, Love in Transition tomorrow? Of course, we're excited. I even prayed on it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> it's about that time, uh, right? <laughs> I know, right? Oh my goodness, I'm just so impressed. I mean, it's it's all up everywhere. I might as well just have it right on my back too. I love it. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, that's great, man. Uh, I know, I'm pain. very impressed. Yes, you know, TJ's doing it. Every day, Wait, all day. And just trying to be like you, Moko, you know. Ah! Uh, the way, man. <laughs> <laughs> no man no man you have that title right now you yeah. know i'm gonna give that to you right you know? yes hands down hands down you ready for this all day i'm ready yes <laughs> i'm out here hi miss michelle yes right hi, Moko. <laughs> how are you uh, Moko is the popular man everybody know him you know Nobody okay. knows. You know, I, I have Obama's number. Hold on. You see? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I understand you are best friend, you're, you're best friend to Trump, you know? Uh, I know. Hey, you. hey, don't say it out loud. That was uh, personal, uh, personal information. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Can you imagine this black man with Trump? Oh, no, harsh. but you, the, the thing here is you're telling us, excuse me, hold on, let me make this call right now. <laughs> hey, man, you know, you got to talk. I, you I, have I, to fake it till you make I can it imagine it, 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 little Wayne. You, you saw him with uh, Trump then, you know? But that the guy boy's just, an idiot. The guy, no, <laughs> an idiot? You called him an idiot. The guy got his pardon. Right? Yeah, but, yeah, He's doing big things. things. He got his He's presidential pardon. That's things. all he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I'll take that back. That guy's a smart dude. <laughs> <laughs> he got his freedom. Yeah. Right? Oh, That's fantastic. I yeah. I so met it's a Friday. I Michelle. Hmm? Michelle, what do you do? Yeah. You're not uh, with Matt? Pardon me? I haven't met you. I, I'm just trying to the face, you know? My face? Yeah, I'm trying to see if, if we've met before here or True. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do you do? You're an actor, <laughs> filmmaker. I'm a ear stylist. Hmm? A ear stylist. Oh, a hair stylist. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. okay. We need you. We need you in production. We need you. Know? you. <laughs> yeah, we need you. Production. You know, so. <laughs> okay. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, every every aspect of production is very very important. You know, I tell people yes, you sure. never underestimate any. You know, everything combined together makes a good project what it is. 
Yes, mm -hmm. sure. and, you know, you see the importance of a, of a hairstylist, makeup artist, uh, when you're on a real set, and you, you know, with the yeah. one especially those that know their what they are, what they're doing. You understand me? You know, mm -hmm. very important. Yeah, yeah. The combinations great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We need we need we need people like you. You know, yes, what, Michelle. Next, next. Yeah. Yeah, that's Next, what this, uh, project you're coming on board. That's what this sorry, guys, is for. Um, it's my, about. Sorry, guys, I had a bit of technical difficulties. I'm trying to log back in, and I know that what you're seeing, you can see like a, a very happy face. Yeah, I see. Yeah, you're always smiling. <laughs> I, will, I will be back. You don't even blink. And, and I know. I'm not trying. My, uh, oh. I moved to the left a little bit, and my laptop, my Desktop just went blank. So, but oh, Nika is no. here. I'm gonna let her in, and uh, actually, Christine, you can let her in, and um, we can. Okay, I, I don't see that. Nor do I. No, I is don't Christine see. The host? Is Christine the co-host? You have to make her a co-host. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have to make her a co-host for her to let, be able to let her in. Maybe her computer went off again. Oh, no. Uh, let's see it here. Wait, no, uh, she's here. Okay. okay oh, I can see her now. Your co-host, Christina. Okay, awesome. Okay. So I'm, I'm gently logging back in. Hello. Sorry, guys. Hello. I apologize. Hi, Luna K. How's it going? Take yourself off of mute. Okay, you're just on mute here. If you could take yourself off hello. of mute. Oh, hello, hello, darling. Hello. 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 Welcome. 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 Hello. Everybody, hello. let's give it up for Olunike Adeli in the house. Olunike Adeli in the house. Friday. We're presenting. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Yeah, this is our, 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 our super, our super star representing, you know. <laughs> How's it going, Nikki? You Please know, I'm doing it. well. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. That's good. How are you That's all? How are you all? Yeah. We're just bumping. We're just bumping out here. We're keeping mm -hmm. it styling just like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Isn't it? It's a Friday and it's we're live. We're yes. up here. Yes. Thank <laughs> God and, for Fridays. And yourself, how are you doing? How's everything going? The weather? The weather is garbage. We all know that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, we were just kind of bipolar. Yeah. Canada is so bipolar. <laughs> it's been, it's always been this way. I, I don't understand I can't why. Deal. I can't deal. I can't deal. I terrible. don't know why. It just knew. It's just this part of the world, and uh, it you know, it's just this part of the world. Okay, and this is what it happens. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is not Jamaica. This is not you say. It, it, it's not Nigeria, which we wish it would be because we'd like that sunlight. But no, it has, it has, it has its um, its beauty. It does. Canada is a very beautiful country. If you've ever gotten a chance to, to um, go around it, it's absolutely beautiful um it's just my people were stolen if you know what i mean <laughs> preach preach it let them hear that one more time okay, my people were like stolen so we ain't used to it for centuries we ain't gonna get used to it but we will take the opportunities and the benefits that it has at hey time. i'm <laughs> loving it i'm loving it thank you exactly <laughs> I've, I've, well, had, just... I, I've had the opportunity myself to travel around Canada by road, you know, 
and uh, it's beautiful. If you do that, you you see the beauty of this country. You know the landmark. It's beautiful. The nature, everything. Right. It's absolutely stunning. Yeah. It's stunning. And I'm I'm a nature girl, so mm. I appreciate it for that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Good to have you. I'm gonna just shut up now for the host to do their thing. Now. <laughs> <laughs> And enjoy, I'm going to enjoy the show, you know. Okay. Right? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we have an amazing actress here. Thank you so much for coming. Much appreciated. Thanks. We have, sorry? Thanks for having me. Of course. You're, you're the star here, darling. <laughs> and so we have also our host here, which is Folu. Um, and myself, who's Christina, the co-host. And so let's just dive right in here. Um, so I'd just like to get into your bio that you have here, which is you were born in Toronto, Ontario, um, which is wonderful. <laughs> hey. hey. So Ontario to Sunday. Uh, uh, Sunday, uh, I do apologize if I do not know how to say the names properly because... I, I have to practice a little bit here, but I'm gonna say it and please correct me if you can. Okay. Um, a, your last name, can you say it for me? I don't want to. Yeah, Adeli. Adeli. That's yeah. really nice. I really like how it sounds. Thank you. So a Nigerian computer scientist and Roxanne Bell, a Jamaican nurse, mm -hmm. raised in both Jamaica and Canada. Alunike, I think that's how you pronounce her name. Alunike. Olunike, thank you, yeah. ultimately earned a place at the highly coveted American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York City. After graduating from AADA, Olunike <laughs> returned to Canada, uh, to Toronto to pursue a film, television, and theater uh, career, which ultimately landed her the series um, regular role of Leo Kearns in the highly rated and vastly popular television series, Flashpoint. Mm -hmm. So Aluna K's popularity Sorry. gained momentum. I know your sister. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Which wow. one? I have Fumi. three. Fumi. Oh, okay. Fumi, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. I made it back, Everybody guys. You. See what I'm saying? They just, oh, yeah, they up. all know you at this point. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I love you on the show, too. Okay. I do love you <laughs> on the show. Let's, let's, let's allow them finish our bio because uh, it is Yes, go ahead. It's, it's a very bio. crucial it, point. It's very rich, you know? I'm telling you, and it's a very crucial point that we, we discuss this type of information. It's precious. Uh, okay? I'm looking for the day I'm going to work with uh, Nikkei someday, you know? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to mute everybody now. Okay. Okay, Christina, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, so Anil K's popularity gained um, momentum after her appearances in film and TV shows such as Titans, American Gods, and Working Moms. Currently nominated for the 2021 Canadian Screen Award for her prom uh, her performances in the drama series Corner. No topics off limits, however, respectfully, questions only. <laughs> so, Aluna K, the floor is all you. Your viewers oh. would like to know, <laughs> they would like to know a little bit about you. As you can see, they're just so eager to ask these questions, you know. <laughs> ask away, ask away. Okay. Hi, Olinike. My name is Nisalu. We've been communicating back and forth. Yes. And I thank you. I appreciate you Friday evening coming to join us. I know you probably have a lot of things to do, but you were able to schedule us in for that. I say thank you once again. Now, oh my goodness, where did my Zoom go? Okay. I'm having a lot of technical difficulties. This is the first time. The devil is a liar. In the name of the Lord, <laughs> We are going to do this Zoom. Yes. 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 Because we were going so well. And I said, you, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Him in Jesus. Because I was about to you add you. I was about to add you. And then my computer just blanked out. So I had to go look for my phone, look for my laptop. Anyways, we're here. We're good. 
So um, once again, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. And mm -hmm. um, since I got a hold of your name, I've been like, wow, in this area, I must find her. We must get to know who you are. And, you know, just it's a Friday evening, relaxing evening. I think I'm overdressed. I should have checked with you first. Maybe you wear my tank top as well. But you know what? I'm in the house, so. <laughs> cool. In the house is warm. Warm and nice, you see? Yeah. All right, then. So uh, we've done your bio, and we'd like to know your journey. So. <laughs> what well, part? I'm going to start from. Uh, there, there's a bit of information that you gave us that I thought was wow. You said to us um, in our correspondence that. Denzel Washington, not just Uncle Denzel down the streets. Denzel Washington actually spoke to you about drama. Can you mm -hmm. tell us how you got up to up to that point, what he said, and what that led to? Um. Well, I mean, I, it was on the, the the set of John Q, and. Um, how it started is that it was just so happened by chance that I was even on that set to start it off um, because I had bumped into someone that I had I, like I bumped into a person that I didn't even I didn't know we just happened to meet by chance and he happened to be a producer and um, he said he was doing this film that was uh starring Denzel he's he was a producer of it and I was like oh okay and I was like what, what's that you know and this was a time when I think it was like what 99 2000 2001 there was just a lot of film that was in Toronto and um so he just invited me and my friends to come on set and 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 see what they were doing and we did and he hired all of us as background but one day he also he, he asked me if I can help um out Kimberly Elise which played who played Denzel's um wife um my friend asked me to come and um help babysit for her daughter because her babysitter hadn't come from LA yet and so I of course I said no problem and because I was around her now more, um, and because that's play, she's playing Denzel's wife, I was, I was always around Denzel all the time, the, the two of them. And so what happened is that now every lunchtime, we just ended up spending that time together. And then he asked me, he's like, young lady, what would you like to, to do with this art form? Um, and I, and I was very eager. I was like, I want to sing, I want to dance, I want to act, I want to do, and he's like, whoa, I need you to calm down. I need you to do one really good, pick the one you really love, do that really well. And then little by little, bring the other talents along because now you have the discipline of one and you'll apply the same discipline to the others. And so I, took the advice and I was like, well, where do I start? And he said, well, have you ever tried to go to like, you know, talk about schools in New York? I was like, what? No, I can't just go to New York. Like what? at that time I was a mother of, I, I, Alicia was probably like five or six at that time. And my daughter, and I couldn't imagine like A, leaving her or B, going to New York with her and what would I do like as a single parent in New York not knowing where money's coming from how I'm going to feed my child or whatnot and but I, I applied I applied to the to the school um, American Academy of Dramatic Arts then I got in and then the fees were like doubled because I'm an international student so at that time I sold my car to pay for the fees and um, I went with my daughter, found a two bedroom. It was just so much going on, but I couldn't not take the advice because how do you get advice from somebody so prominent and then let that falter? And I, I'm just not a person who's built that way. I, I, God put me on this earth to do such great things. And mm -hmm. And be, a, and be something for so many people that never think 
that uh, like art or just heights of any any stature you know th that it's possible and I get to be one of those people that get to climb as well as nurture and inspire so I don't take that lightly and so when I got when I got advice from a great I took that and I applied it and I had to also understand that timing wasn't the thing. It was it was a longevity thing and that it, I, it wasn't about fame. And it took me a while to understand that it wasn't about fame, you know, because everybody wants their name in the paper. It's just a thing. You want to you want to have a legacy before you die. It's a thing. It's a thing for all humans, um, whether you've gone through trauma or not. It's just a thing for all humans want to be recognized, validated by their peers. Um, so you sometimes you pick things for the wrong reason, reasons or you go into things for the wrong reasons, but somehow because of the guidance that Denzel gave me to now hone a craft, set me on a path to, to navigate away from fame and into what it meant to stand on the backs of my ancestors. Wow, that was loaded. I hope everybody's taking notes because there's <laughs> going to be a quiz at the end. Thank you so <laughs> much for that. So um, in your bio, I, well, because of technical difficulties, in your bio, you know, um, it says how you are Canadian, Nigerian, and Jamaican. Mm -hmm. Tell us how that was growing up like the kind of support you got, um, parents, community, stuff like that. Like just when you started out, when you decided, okay, I'm going to go into this, no mm -hmm. homework. Well, it took, it took my family a while. I mean, I've been doing stage or being um, a, perf a performer probably from the age of like two or three doing, you know, church, engagement plays, you know, Christmas plays, Easter plays, choir. I have always been the that person on the stage um, with families. So it wasn't far-fetched to them that I was talented in this realm. However, they, I mean, bless their hearts, they only see it as hobby, as a hobby. It's just, these, these are hobbies. These are not things that you take seriously and have a career in. And I understand where they're coming from, not because they don't think it's possible, but it just, it's a harder road and they don't want their children going down the hardest road, especially already being black. I mean, what that meets, what that meets in society is um, already extremely difficult. Um, and so they want to alleviate that difficulty as much as possible. And so to choose that route, the difficult route was not ideal for them, both Nigerian and Jamaican, because I come from scholars, I come from ed very educated people that put education first. The education is first, period. And so, you know, they only see an engineering doctor or lawyer, that's the thing. And I understand that. I appreciate that now. I didn't appreciate it then. I didn't understand it. I wanted, you know, I want to break away from what that was and do my own thing. And it was a struggle for a while. It was a, it was a, it was a, it, there was a lot of resistance um, from me and from my family. Um, but as I pursued it, I mean, they, and the thing is, they've always come to any performance that I've had and they were like, oh yeah, she is, she's good, eh? but it's still a hobby, right? Um, but I think when I left to go to school in New York and then they had to come over to New York to see a lot of my school plays and that, then it was starting to shape as a reality. Um, but they still always gave me the advice of, you know, maybe you need, you need to go back to school. Um, try for a plan B. And I was like, I don't believe in plan Bs, but um, somehow 
when I got back to Canada, it wasn't very long. I think it was like maybe five months. I was, I was in a play that traveled for five months to schools all over Ontario. And so I was able to like practice the craft and also um, really hone my skills and what I've learned for the past three and a half years, four years in, in New York. And I was just so lubed up. And by the time that I got the opportunity, it was like five months later, by the time I got the opportunity um, to really show a bigger audience my, my talents, that's when the, the play was coming to an end. And then Flashpoint was looking for another cast member. And I was already versed. I was doing, I was doing this play, I was the lead of the play, and plus I was playing four other roles. Interesting. Right. So how did you, you how know, did you juggle all of that? And I said, go. So when they saw me, they were like, oh, who's this person? And I was like, you know, I'm I'm the best thing that ever happened to you. You actually like put out the notice for me. You know what I mean? You you wrote a role in a description, but it was actually Olamike written and everything. Like that's you know, I came with that that New York confidence as well. Like I had New York. I had Nigerian and I had Jamaican confidence going into a room. <laughs> Solid. Solid. Can so nobody was, talk to you now? Don't no. Know. <laughs> no one's ever really been able to talk to me. Not even my family members when they were saying, don't do this, do this. I, they, they couldn't even talk to me. So how could a casting talk to me? If my family doesn't even have the influence of what I want to do, because as long as I'm not harming people and I'm doing something for me and I'm going at it, because I believe that you should go at anything that you want to do. Like if a brain surgeon was going after what they want to do, you know what I mean? You have to study this just like a brain surgeon. This isn't, like I said, not about fame. This isn't about like, oh, I need, I need everybody to validate me or this is fun. It's supposed to be fun, but know that it's a lot of work. Mm. There's a lot of research that goes into it. You know, it's, it's not learn, uh, memorizing lines and showing up. No. Okay. You, you know, memorizing lines should be, you should anti want that. Um, it's about knowing why are you saying these things? And if you know the backstory to why you're saying these words, then there's no memorization needed because you know what to say. Mm -hmm. Wow, cool. So having said that, um, how has studying African studies in at the University of Toronto, how has that helped shape your career or has it not even had an influence at all? Oh my gosh, it's had a huge impact. It's had a huge impact specifically for agency the way I walk into the world, the way I show up at things, the way I um, see myself within the industry. It's created agency. Um, I'm not an actor for hire, I am a boss. And I'm a boss because I know some things. And because I walk with, like I said, the confidence of the ancestors because I stand on their shoulders. And so with that, there is nothing I can't do and I'm willing to walk away at at the cost of of securing my integrity mm -hmm. and because of that they see it it's it's added so much to my life especially when I first started at UFT uh, when I first started I was just, I would, the, the reason why I even went back to school, I was bored. I was bored of the industry. I was like, I've done so much with my craft and like I, I paid so much money to go to school and I struggled and I'm a single mom and whatnot. And still they would come to me with um, explanations not, that, that didn't even speak to what I'm supposed to be put on the earth to do, which is tell stories. It was very materialistic. It was very, um, it was very dipped. It was very much dipped in what's the word? It's like 
Hollywood is very, um, it's like, I, I wanna, I wanna say the, I don't wanna say the, the word that doesn't, doesn't uh, pertain to this because it, like it's, it is dipped in superficiality. It really is, it is. And I don't come from that. I don't come from that. And so I was trying to figure out how I fit with maintaining my integrity, maintaining who I am. And for me, making decision, the decision to go back to school made me unavailable to them, knowing that I was talented and I was not available because I was getting educated. And because of that, they had to be very particular if I was missing any class, any lecture, any exam, anything, that the role had to be really good. And then therefore, if the role was exceptional, then I can go to my professors and they can give me leeway to say, yes, we, you should like, let us accommodate you in any way where we could change the date of your exam. You can do it privately in a room, whatnot, but it had, they had to come with the right rules. And because of that, now I gained agency. Yeah. I like that. All right, someone in the chat said mighty. <laughs> so, it's, it's resonating it's, so it's resonating it's so hard to find that it's so hard because you're always on a tightrope I, I i just got off of a call right now where four different people called me about the like a role that we want to take like my 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 reps mom uh, friends of mine that are writers and producers and directors of the project, but like also there was just so many forces coming at me just before I got on this call that here's why we think you should go this way. And here's why we think you should go this way. But at the end of the day, I don't get up at 4 a.m. in the morning to do my devotion for nothing. I don't get up at 4 a.m. to speak to my ancestors for nothing. What am I doing that for if it's not to listen to what I, the, 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 the path, the journey that they have for me? And so I've had signs of what I'm supposed to do and what a certain role means to me and what I can do with it. But yet it always, there's always so many forces of why I shouldn't, even though they're right too, because of course I can let it go and take the money, but I don't know if that would sit right with my soul. Word. And that was literally like nine minutes before I got on this call. <laughs> wow. And awesome. I said, you know what? I am, because, because me and my, I, I even like, there's a time where um, 2019, I parted ways with my agency, um, a big, very big and prominent agency in Toronto. And I decided that I'm going to let my cousin, um, who is incredible and has, you know, incredible business sense, I'm going to let him deal with anything has to do with my career and with Canada. And also he's going to work with my LA team. I just decided that I needed somebody who understood the vision. Um, and that was representative of me that knew my knew me to the core from when we were children growing up in Jamaica to um, to now and the beliefs that we have of God I needed that person on my team if because I mean if I didn't have him it would be everybody coming at me about why I should do this and why I should do that. And we don't want to anger this person or that. And I'm like, but I've never relied on any of you. God picks my roles. I've always relied on that. And so I, I needed to get rid of um, certain energies to bring in the energy that spoke to what that was. Hmm. Wow. 
Extra. Loaded, 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 loaded. We have more. Everybody, we're all having fun. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Everybody, thumbs up. We're all having fun so far. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So speaking about roles, we, I, <laughs> outside of the info you gave us generously, I, I went back and actually saw some of the um, uh, series. Flashpoint, Lear. Mm. How was that for you, Leah Kearns? Like the audition process, did you audition for, were you going in for something else and then you got that role or we went? Straight? No, that was, that was the role that I was telling you that I, I, like that was, that was auditioning just as I was coming off of my play for five months. Leah Kearns. Nice. And that was, I mean, the way the, the scripture was written, I was like, that's me, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> Like, you know, like fearless, fearless in so many ways. And, um, and I mean, the experience of Flashpoint was, it was great for what it was because it, that was probably the biggest, that was the biggest thing at that time um, that happened to my career so quickly. And so I had to learn the business and just the, just the art of being on set so quickly. And it was a, it was a struggle too, because I was the newbie and eager to learn, um, but I didn't always have the support. To do it. Yeah, I didn't always have the support, which was very disappointing to me because I was coming from the school of thought with theater that you are, that, that theater is a support system. That's right. right. Nothing works unless everybody works together. Works together. That's right. right. Where it, this was a more selfish medium where it's like every man for himself. And I really, and it's not, not every set is like that. Not at all. And, and then, and Flashpoint wasn't always like that as well. It's just, there was energies that I didn't take to, that taught me for the rest of my career, I wasn't going to be a part of energies like that. Wow. Yeah, so, but it gave me what I needed to, it gave me such wonderful lessons that I needed to take forth in the rest of my career. Okay, nice, that's, that's really good because um, if you can't learn something from any kind of set, mm -hmm. why even there? Like um, exactly. some of my past um, guests have said the same thing that you said, if they're not gonna take a role that's gonna um, diminish them or make them lose their dignity in any way, um, are there, or is there any specific type, specific type of role that you would like, forget it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Mm, probably killing kids or molesting children. No way. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, I couldn't do that. <laughs> Just take note. Um, American gods, working moms and Titans. Is it fair to ask which one was your favorite to work on? American Gods or Titans? American Gods, Working Moms or Titans? Oh man, that's a hard one. Which one did you enjoy the most? Hmm. I would say American Gods. Okay. American Gods gave me a real freedom to be able to show what I can do. Okay. Yeah what I can do. And I remember the experience of being on set. It happened on Titans too, but in a different way where when I, when I, when it was my turn to speak, to act, and then it's like the room went quiet, but like that was, that's what happened in American Gods, the room. It's, I sucked the air out of the room and everybody was in this place of like, Oh, and Everybody just did whatever they could to support what was happening. And uh, that was a really great moment. Just, and it was more than one moment. It was, it was more than one moment while filming. They were just like, we have to protect this creative. Wow. Yeah. And, and everybody was so wonderful on that set too. Like I was like, yo, wow, this is a great set to work on because what I love about American Gods, they tell the truth. Yes, that's good. 
if you've ever watched the series, you're like, well, because even se- um, season three, it's all about like the Orishas. And I'm like, yes, they went there. You know, they have a Nancy the character, but they tell the truth. And they once tell- you have, mm-hmm. go ahead, sorry. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I said, once you're in a set that really um, aligns with what you believe in, then it makes a lot of difference in how you interact with other cast and crew members, right? Mm-hmm. Um, just so, a moment, I'm gonna plug plug this. Uh, it says low battery, hold on. <laughs> yep. So Christina, over to you. Do we have any questions? So we do have some questions here and uh, we have one from Moko, which is we're, we're kind of waiting for our guests to come back. But the question is what black actresses would she love to work with? So I guess we're gonna have oh. to kind of wait for that one exactly. Oh. It's a good one, but we do have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Welcome back. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so this question, is from our viewers here. What black actress would you love to work with? Ooh, I would love to work with, uh, okay. Well, Cicely, she's gone, <laughs> but I would love to work with Viola. I, would I love knew to it. Work with Felicia Rashad, um, Angela Bassett. <laughs> she's all right. I, um, um, Layla Rashawn. Um, okay. Also, uh, mm, let me think. I would love to work with, oh my gosh, um, Karen, um, Karen Robinson, she's in Canada. I would love to work with, oh my God, Alice Lee Smith. I would love to work with mm. Avery Woodard. Oh, she's amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Loretta Devine is divine. Right? Yes. <laughs> um, um, I love, um, and, and for the younger actresses, like around my age and younger, I would love to work with um, Nicole Bahari. She's fantastic. I would love to work with, man, there's so, um, Chantal Riley, Muna uh, Trior, um all of them but like i would say my favorite my favorite my favorites would be um angela bassett and uh and uh viola davis yep you have a a viewer here just saying that if you didn't say those two she was ready to log off oh lord Uh, (laughs) she she knew she knew that you would you would come through (laughs) yes yes absolutely (laughs) Sorry, it's like, this is not working here. Oh, no problem, no problem. I'm telling you guys, right from the beginning of this <laughs> show, the world has tried all sorts of nonsense. We're going so, through in a positive way, Polu. They're not taking us out not tonight. taking it out. They're okay, so while we're, while we're waiting, we just want to welcome everybody back on. We have um, Mr. Gabriel Laifa, Abby Williams, BB mm-hmm. Blessing, Blaze, Dr. Femme, mm-hmm. Mr. Umade, uh, Yamit of Canada, Gloria, Gemini, Michelle, Moko, Olushobo Ale, Obi Purple, Rachel Williams, Olabi Salako, and of course TJ's here, Gladys from the UK, our DJ's here, Vivian from Nigeria, um, Miles, you have not told us where you're calling from, but we appreciate you. We thank you. Um, you know, it's like I said, it's Friday evening, midnight for some people, almost 1, 2 a.m. We thank you. And um, we'll get, we'll, like I always do, we'll always have fun, chill, relax. Our guest is here. You going out tonight, Miss Alunike? Going out? Where? <laughs> okay. Wanted to make sure, so... <laughs> We're here. We're, we're not going to take too much of your time. We just take like five hours. Is that okay? Just kidding. <laughs> and you know what, too? You know what, too? It's like, even if there was going, something going on, oh, I can't do anything because we, when I, 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 I've been filming throughout the entire pandemic from it started. Yes. Wow. 
and there are protocols and we are in a bubble and we test like two, three times a week. They're, 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 where would I be going to pick up what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to be pick up what? Pick up what to bring to who? Like, no, like, you know, I've got my, my family in the house and it's so, and I've, I've loved, um, understanding that I'm a homebody. I'm okay with that. If I go out and I'm kicking and having a good time and whining on myself and that's in Excuse Jamaica. Me. <laughs> Excuse me. Right? Because I got a chance to go away to Jamaica at least last last year from June, beginning of June to end of August. So I got three months mm-hmm. in Jamaica. Me and my husband just rented a house and we were out. We're like, we're out. But I, but, and then I was still working, but they were able to like ADR and voiceovers they were able to find studios in Jamaica wherever mm-hmm. I was to like still keep me like I still kept working and finishing projects and I was just so excited about that because Jamaican engineers were hired oh you they they, they got to get work and I was like that's good. so amazing if if you know what I mean? If anything else, that's what's, I mean, I didn't care if I was working or not. I was just like happy that I facilitated a situation where Jamaicans got to work and they got to work in a way that they weren't used to. Mm. Right? Now they had to do stuff with video games or voice, like they had to do stuff that was, they had to connect with LA producers and, you know, and wow. and work and learn. And I was, they were like, wow, we've never done this before. I'm like, this is awesome that you, like, this is awesome. <laughs> I was emotional. I would go to the bathroom and have a little, a little cry. Cause I was like, this is, this, I've done that. Wow. I've done that. Okay, do we Thank have you. any? So we, we do have other questions oh, as well. Okay, um, someone just made a comment. Nice seeing you again, Olunike. We worked together when you acted Efun Shetan Aniwura on African theater ensemble stage play. Do you remember that? Yes, yes. That's what I, the play I was talking about, the five months. That was the marriage of Anansawa. Ah, okay. Of so we have, we have Yame Tofumi Olumade here with us online. Uh, we're going to get to audience interaction very soon because a lot of people are here. They want to hear from you. They want to say something to you. But we're yeah. going to try and get to a lot more info and then we'll just open it up and let people come in. So, um, Christina, do you have any other questions? Yeah, I do. I have one question that, which is kind of in lines with what you're talking about. It's how has the pandemic affected you personally and mm-hmm. also as an actress? Um, well, as an actress, it's, uh, uh, mm, I think it, it uh, yeah, this is a tough one. It's, it's not affected me much as an actress. Okay. Well, it's only affected me, but the, the protocols, but whatever, I'm okay with protocols and whatnot. Like I'm fine. As long as I get to do my thing, it's been weird. It's weird. It's a weird thing on set, but it's fine. But it ha- didn't slow down my career. In fact, it sped it up. <laughs> oh okay <laughs> it, it sped it up because what happened is that like um canada kept going more so than the u.s and so a lot of the u.s projects would come over to canada to film mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um but they couldn't bring a lot of their american american um actors over because then it was an extra no seriously it was an extra forty thousand dollars each american actor wow. for the insurance for covid and so, and plus the quarantine. So what they did was like, they would now try to find um, great black um, black Canadian actors that can do that job so that they can bypass yeah. those fees. And so it kept a lot of us working. Oh, that's good. Right, right. So it was like, whoa. So roles that they would have already put an American in, they came here and they're like, okay, who are your, who are your top black actors? You know what I mean? And it was like, oh, oh, shoot. So now we don't have to fill an actor quota, but you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, it was a very, so now it was like ours for the picking. No, I'm not available for this, but I'm available <laughs> for that. Like, that's what it was. And I was like, okay, okay. Now, like, we're going to like milk it as long as we can. Um, but what it is, is just, it's exposed us, which it's exposed our talent, which is fantastic. That's and good. so all we do is try to uh, is try to you know um, send that elevator back down so that you know they, and, and there's this actor and there's this person and so we're all kind of 
promoting each other a lot. I like that. Yeah, we are yeah. promoting each other like, yes, like all I do is have black people on my feed. That's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. You know, it's like a little community problems. going on there. Yeah, good. and even now, I like with like four of my really good, um, close friends in the in the business. Like we've even formed we we formed an alliance because we are trying to usher in black hair and makeup because we're like we are so sick of this crap where we don't feel comfortable with hair and makeup doing it properly, um, mm -hmm. because they refuse to hire um black artists for that section and so we because we are at the top of the game i would say we've all aligned to say uh yeah we're we're we have to negotiate this in the contract so in the contract mm -hmm. it's like yeah i'm not willing to do this project unless you have somebody who knows how to black black hair and, <laughs> and makeup as well as i have somebody so i'm gonna choose this person that's you know it's that's a well, part excuse of the me it's wow. a part of the negotiations and even like okay. down to um just recently like two days ago um a white director that i just worked with him because i brought my own hair and makeup on set because i negotiated that in the deal <laughs> now he was asking me hey do you, um i need somebody for this project in vancouver do you think that you wow. can maybe like you know, yeah and that, that's that's what you want to do you want to generate those opportunities for yeah. your people and so that's something I'm very much dedicated to. That's really good. I, I really like that. You connect with, you know, your people and try to also provide that type of connection for them as well. It's, thank yes, you. I think I like that's, that. it's important. It's important for your own success to, like I said, send the elevator back down. It's important to have mentors and to have mentees. If you don't understand what that concept is, um, it's going to be very difficult for you to get anywhere or to be, even when you do get someplace, to be even grateful for where you are because you, it, it's, it's, it's a support system like no other when you have a mentor that is grooming you and you're also helping to groom the people coming up. Man, I'm com you're coming up with a lot of timbits here. I'm telling you, you're given the right advice. And that, that kind of goes into the next question, which is what advice would you give to the young actors in the industry? And study. Study, yes, yes. Study your craft. I always say that. I'm like, study your craft. It's not, it's like I said, it's brain surgery. Okay, okay. Yeah, study your craft and don't quit no matter what. If this is something that you believe in, then eventually somebody or the universe will understand because it's the last 10% mm -hmm. of your efforts that, that are recognized. That's right. Yeah, but you have to study like any other profession. You have to study um, like doctorate le level. Oh, okay. So yeah, like, and I don't mean literally you have to go to university and get a doctorate. I'm talking about your pursuit has to feel like you're studying for your doctorate. Because mm -hmm. it's studying human behavior and you have to give that that same attention. Okay, okay. Well, I'm gonna pass it back to Folu. Hi, <laughs> I'm back. And I actually had to go and do some prayer and fasting in between, so we're good. Oh, that's um, amazing. <laughs> we're good, we're I'm good, we're good. Right now. Like For those of you who don't understand that, we had some yeah. issues earlier, so we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're on a good roll now, now. we're on a good roll. Yeah. Um, I've seen, I haven't seen all of your work, but the one that I've um, gotten into, Miss hmm, Olunike. Yeah. <laughs> Event delivered. Bam. Working moms. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. Da, 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 da. You're short. Scylla. Mm-hmm. How was that? Oh, that was like, wonderful. How did you that was um that was a that that was a that that's still not even done because that short is is the pre cursor to a series um um yeah it just hasn't i because of like you know covid kind of makes everything kind of weird and slowed mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. you know but it's supposed to be made into something much bigger and that that the the short of Scylla, it's 
so beautifully shot and it goes it 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 loops through eras right and uh mm -hmm. yeah that that's something that's supposed to be on a bigger scale with as a series and i love the you know the 19 what what is it what, it's like the 40s 50s feel and with jazz and i i would love to be able to continue with that project but yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it was wonderful working with that team. Okay, so I'm gonna play a little clip. Oh, and, <laughs> yeah. and it's your so time. It's nothing. It, it's not. It's not anything. Um, to it's not anything secret. It's just I don't think a lot of people here have been able to see it. And yeah. if you have, come back and comment on it. But I'm just gonna play this clip real quick. And um, there seems to be a theme running through some of your roles. So that's why I oh, want to put the theme. Okay. And there then we we're going to talk about that. So here goes. Pray for me that this works. Okay. So, okay. I'm going to go back here. Play. Computer. Are we good? Yes. Okay. I'm just going to play in my words. And I saw it earlier. See, when we pray in numbers, it works. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> no, it, it's it's loading. And as okay. you guys can see in my background, I um I wasn't on set, but I was able to get this background. She never died. Oh um, yeah. Twenty nineteen. How did you do that? <laughs> I was. You have to tell me your secrets now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, online we'll we'll, we'll get to it we'll, we'll, when we get offline. <laughs> so cool. I'm gonna charge everybody else. So I'm just um, <laughs> trying to get this to play. It's coming. It's coming. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I seen it right away, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" I you... was like, "Whoa!" Right? I, don't have that. <laughs> I need to put that. That's what I'm saying. So when I seen it, when I came, I said, "Wait, hold on one second here. Like, I need yeah. something in my background here because that's looking real good." You know what I mean? I might as well just write your name right up here because it I'm like, so I can't amazing. be left out. Yeah, <laughs> I can't be left awesome. out. Here. Can you guys see my screen? We can. Can oh, you see my wow. screen? This clip, okay. huh? It's time. Yep. Can you hear it? Oh my goodness. No, not yet. I don't know why it's doing this. Yes. That's the look. <laughs> Was that the look you gave in auditions? I don't remember that audition. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I actually yeah, that, the wasn't audio. Even, that wasn't an audition oh no I mean like was that the look that got you the role N well well I had done a film with the director oh, in a different film and uh yeah and then we we worked so well together when I was in Jamaica just hanging out with my people she called me and she said I need you um, I was given this role that was supposed to be a man originally. And I had, Jackson, can you I me? found it was supposed wow. to be a man originally, but they're like, it's going to be a woman now. And they wanted me to direct it. And I said, I'm not directing it without Olamike. And so hey. and then I remembered that I was like, wait a minute. And I tried out for another little secretary role in that movie. <laughs> but it was supposed to be a man. And then it's like, and then, the director, like her and I are like the dynamic duo, duo Audrey Cummings, because we did Darken together and then, and then Darken, I'm sorry, Darken and then um, She Never Died, but we are the one two punch kind of, she's so wonderful. And yeah, it's just so funny that like I ended up doing the lead role as opposed to the Arthur, secondary can you hear? role. <laughs> and then well, they had to I find, then they had to find the money to give me. I love it. <laughs> What about now? But that's what I'm saying about, you know, having somebody's back, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have their back. Sure. And you trust. Like she trusted me a hundred percent to show up a hundred and fifty percent. 
that's what it is that's mm-hmm. what it is and we can see like I'm yes. just looking in the background and like the clips wow yeah this is good even mm-hmm. that face <laughs> me, no I'm while telling I, you man while I eat somebody the facial fingers. expressions are great yeah you're bringing so a wonderful. thousand <laughs> I'm telling you because wow. some people do this they 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 take their time and they practice these facial expressions <laughs> in the mirror right mm-hmm. and to see it right here like your facial expressions are like good thank I love you. it thank you so much so I guess right now we're just waiting for the volume on here mm-hmm I guess in the meantime, I do have another question to ask you. Sure. And so the question is, how do you continue to expand your craft in order to stay on top of things within your role? I travel. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's explore that topic. Yeah. So travel. I love to travel. It's my obsession. Don't we all? Yes. <laughs> it's my obsession to see how humans live in different parts of the world and the cultures and you know, the food, uh, the, the music, <laughs> the way they dance and move and their language. Uh, I yes, find yes. that um, it expands my creativity so much. Uh, I had the, I had the luck of on Flashpoint in Re, um, Enrico Colantoni, who, um, who is a, such a seasoned veteran actor. He's so amazing. He was like the big boss, the older guy. He was the, the boss on Flashpoint. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He told me, he's like, and I will never forget it. He's like, Olanike, work for the in-between. Put <laughs> your first check, put it away for the next vacation. Um, mm. Because you need to go and gather nuts. So work for the in-between. Don't work to see what the one's the next job. Work for the vacation so that you can gather nuts to bring back to the work. Yes. And from then, I, I was like, done done and done so it doesn't matter like the first check I take a little chunk of that and I put it towards an all-inclusive somewhere whether I was going to Spain or Morocco or wherever and I was just like put it away and then I just save the rest mm-hmm. I like that I like and I just that went on my vacation and with my mom or my my, my daughter and we just explored and it was like wow this is awesome because travel more than anything is everything everything right it's everything for human Mm -hmm. interaction for understanding for um um less judgment it's it's for real humanity connections and so Mm -hmm. that to me was a wonderful piece of advice that I have I had gotten and I love travel I love taking my daughter to travel because she's so worldly and such a brilliant person and Ooh. she also is very fluent in um German so yeah. oh it was always nice. yeah so it was always really cool when we'd be traveling and we'd see German travelers and she goes, oh, oh, the oh, she's, oh, she's, and I'm like oh my god <laughs> that's, that's bad <laughs> Oh, oh wow! Just watch her. Like, there's a black girl doing that right now. Right? Wow. Yeah. The amazement. The amazement. <laughs> the amazement, and she's in UFT right now. She's just. Oh, nice. She's gonna be. Yeah, she finished up her third year. She's and she's a she's a German major, and so okay. yeah. And so she <laughs> once she's finished, she's like, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. I'm going to Europe. I'm because she also her um she went to school in England before she even like came back to study again in Canada. Mm -hmm. She went to study architecture. So she's Mm -hmm. been worldly, you know? And so it's just really cool to watch her fluently write, speak. (laughs) Um, You must be proud. You must be proud. You're like, are you kidding me? She's like, yeah. I'm like, (laughs) and we always sit in amazement, like, oh my God, I'd be forgetting. She's doing it again. Like, (laughs) yeah, she's doing it again. And also, she also knows French and Spanish. Wow. So we're always like, when people talk to us, when we're going, when we go away and people talk, we're like, Alicia, what'd they say? 
So we just you can't go home. You can't leave yeah. her out. You can't right. leave her out. We just go, uh huh. Okay, we nod and then we we just look, everybody looks to Alicia. Mm-hmm. Like translate. <laughs> 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 and when we even lived in New York, because when I was going to school there, she went yeah. when went to school, she studied Italian. So she's just so good with languages. She's very good at picking things up. So we just, it's just pretty good. To, it's nice to have that in the family. I'm like, I should like get back into French and whatever and get that going. Especially Yoruba is what I really want to learn. Mm. that's what I really and I make lots of efforts when I'm in Nigeria like I'm writing my sentences I'm, you know trying to get around I I really want to know that because like I have my sisters and my brother and they all know it and I don't because I have a you know Jamaican mother so I knew I learned okay. her mother tongue because I know okay. Patois I know Patois very well okay hey <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, wow. Yeah, so I understand. <laughs> Your, mm-hmm. our, our viewers actually have one question for you here. Yeah. Um, it says, you know, you're such an uh, inspiration to many Black actors mm-hmm. and an amazing talent that directors would want to work with. I have seen some of your work and watched how hard you prepare for projects. How come you didn't work um, on the set of Black Panther? You would have nailed it. Because I'm in Canada, that's why. Really? Come oh, on. I'm really? You that's what it is. It can't, Canada, that can't. Canada be. doesn't have a star system that you would hope. It's very oh. hard here. It's very hard here, and a lot of times, can't um, really talented white actors have to leave here in order to be recognized in America before they come. The before Canada recognizes. Them. No way. Imagine now a black person. Like, who are the famous Black people out of Canada right now? Stefan James and Shamar, um, Shamir Anderson. Name somebody else. <laughs> I was about to say myself. They, <laughs> had to they had to leave. That's what's up. That's what's up. Canada is very slow on their Black actors. They're slow mm. on their period. And Quebec doesn't have this problem, by the way. They have a star system. They have a star system, you know, like when people are up to going up the ranks and really putting a lot of effort into their work, being paid a certain way. Like, they're, <laughs> like right now, Canada is tripping because like I went and got me a lawyer <laughs> to do oh, my wow. negotiations. So they're like, uh, uh, we're not used to this. Do you understand? Like just the other day, a casting director was just like, oh, congratulations. You, you booked this thing, right? And OK, <laughs> you booked this thing. You know, congratulations. I was like, congratulations. The <laughs> negotiations are not even done yet. What do you see talking about? To me, he's the middleman. He's a middleman. Wow. Do you know what I'm saying? Because wow. it's like, oh, you thought you were dealing with that person that was still coming up. No, nah, I went and got me a whole American team. So now, now you gotta really like pay me what mm-hmm. I'm over. Or at least meet me somewhere decent. Because before right? like, congratulations. Yeah, book the role. Here's the rate and thank you. Are you going to take it or not? He even had the nerve to say, you know, let us know if you're going to take it or not because we got to move on. What are you talking about? We are not even, hold on, sir. (laughs) Not even know that we're not even speaking to you anymore. We were speaking to the network and the producers. So I don't know what you're being informed, but you no longer are part of the conversation. And that's the lack of Canada. Wow. Okay. Because I give it to my I, I give it to my 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 person who reps me here, which is my cousin Andre, and he's amazing, and to the LA team. And I just sit back and, and they go, Well, it's all up to you. So do you want to do it or not? Or, and I go, I and I, and I go, yes or no. And so I'm the boss. And but in Canada, they don't make you the boss. And Canadians need to have more agency. Canadian everything, producers, writers. Actors especially have more agencies in what you're doing. You need to own, you need to hone your craft so much that you know that your merchandise is is good, is high. That's right. That's right. Worthy because I'm yes. done with them thinking <laughs> that like I'm gonna like be okay with a congratulations. <laughs> And that's, 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 that's not all we want. That's not all we want. Exactly. Because I negotiated. Oh, thanks for that offer, but that's not what we're going to counter. Congratulations. We didn't even counter yet. Get out of here. 
Exactly. Wow, that's 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 loaded. Um, thank you so much for that. Um, yeah. what you what you're saying really resonates with another um black Nigerian actor mm -hmm. whom I'm sure you're very familiar with. Well, maybe not too familiar with, but um, you guys have done a movie together. Yes. And it's in. I think it just screened in San Bernardino. It is called Cinema of Sleep. Yes. Where you played Omoni. Right? Yes. Yeah. And um, could you tell us about that? Because he was on the he was on our second um, session that we had, and um, of course when I was looking through your profile, I'm like, oh my gosh, she did work with Dio Ade as well, and he was yeah. Great. And he he said almost similar things to what you said, what you have said tonight. Um, can you tell us about that role that you had in it and how it was on set? I and played Dial's um, wife, actually. <laughs> I played Dial's wife, and uh, yeah, that was. It's such a uh, a mind trip that uh, film. It's so it's so wonderfully laid out, and um, I mean. I, I don't know what to say because I don't want to give too much away uh, because it's such a it's such a coveted sorry I'm trying to find it, ch chargers again um, it's such a coveted and protected project because it's it's been way before the way before the lockdown that we had started that project that process um, but yeah it's 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 it speaks to the refugee story. That's what it does. Mm -hmm. It speaks to the refugee story and what it, what it is to, or the immigrant story and what it is to come over to a country trying to make a better life and not, uh, and, and it not going the way that you hoped it would go. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it, like, you know, because there are so many facets to how to how um, the journey is going to be. It's, and, and I think it also, it also centers on the, the journey that the, the men had to take from Nigeria to Algeria, right? Mm -hmm. Remember that time when uh, they were going over to work um, for little to nothing. It was like they were made, being made into new slaves. And so they were hoping to, to be on boats and find a way to, to get to some sort of hope in, in, different, in different lands. So it, 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 it touches on that and it touches on, and so it, this family eventually tries to see if, where, how far they can get. And so, but it's also a play of the mind are they getting far? Did they did they reach the way they were their destination? Did they die in the journey? Um, are they in a delusional state? So you have to watch it to to see where it goes. But it's very political, and I think it's fantastic. It plays to um, our brothers and sisters today that are trying to find a better life for their families. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. So we can't ask you for any spoilers, but do you know, no. do you have an idea when it will come out? Oh, I have no idea that. After I finish a film or a, or That's a series, it. yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't go back. <laughs> I don't go backwards. No, until I have to help promote, that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Because there's, oh. it's like, that's, I, I do it and, it and then now it's yours. Now it's okay. the audience. It has nothing to do with me anymore. It's done. Okay, so someone is asking, what about Roger Cross? I'm going to open up the um, session. So if anybody has any questions that they want to ask directly, if you don't want to type it in, this is the time to do that. If you have ever been on one of my sessions mm -hmm. before, you know that I love playing the game Cahoots. And I actually have a prize tonight. I have a real prize. I see Mr. Gabriel looking at me like, you always win, but you never give me my prize. But don't worry. <laughs> um, TJ, again, um, I, I, got, I got a prize for tonight, for real. So um, we're going to do that. So get your second devices ready. We're going to do that towards the end of um, our session this evening. So 
Um, Vivian from Nigeria is asking, what's the best movie you ever auditioned for? The next one. <laughs> there you go. The next. Did you get that, guys? Yes. The next one is not yes. actually a movie. <laughs> <laughs> The next one is the next movie, the one coming up. Let me a story of one. Because, I mean, I'm always, it's to me, the best thing I've ever done is the next one, right? Um, But um, to give you a story of of an experience, um, I remember needing to leave my reps. Um, This was like, years ago I wanted to like figure out a way to relate to them what I wanted um for my career like I said having agency and I felt that I wasn't being listened to and there's nothing worse than a black woman that is not listened to because honestly we have the answers of everything (laughs) so if you are not willing to listen to the black woman then wow it's it, 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 that's beyond me of not understanding of why you wouldn't listen to what we have to say because I mean I think we're the we have the answers to the to the uh, like how to make the world a better place <laughs> but like for my own personal career um I know what's I know what's good for me I know what I want to do regardless if it's out there or not that's what I want to do and so let's find it and me I'm a person who'd be like Find me all the all the roles, all the roles that white men do. That's what I want to do. <laughs> that's me. The boldness of okay, set me up for what all the white guys are going out for. That's that's, that's me. Um, but they always try to to make me sit in a in a box of reality to them, but it's not reality to me because I'm bold. And um, when I try to bring my concerns to to them they always found a way of talking down to me as if i'm lucky where i'm at and then i'm lucky with what i have but i wanted more i wanted more because there was um, i feel that i'm here on this earth to be able to convey a message i am the muse of the ancestors and they don't understand that language and it's you know, no fault of them. That's not their culture. But it's, that's what I, that's what I understand is that we are the oldest storytellers. And so they couldn't understand me or where I wanted to go or my vision. And um, also to make sure that I got what I was worth. And so anytime I tried to have that conversation, it was mess. it was met with resistance and um trying to make me smaller and so eventually I was like so over it and we parted ways and that was just December 2019 we parted ways and I'm telling you my stomach was in was turned it was like oh my gosh what did what just happened what am I gonna do now like so I am a free agent I have no one whoa I made a huge decision right now Mm -hmm. But I also had to believe, I had to really believe that I made the right choice, that I needed to expunge the old energy and make room for the new energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, Um, my cousin was like, who is my rep now? He's like, I know, I said, I just want to focus on school and that's it. Let me focus on school and and enriching my mind and also shedding the old. And he's like, okay. He goes, but just let me keep an eye on things for you just in case. And I'm like, okay, but like, honestly, let me rest. Please let me just rest. I don't want, don't come to me with no foolishness. (laughs) Let me rest and let me just cultivate. And he's like, all right. And then, um, so that was December. And then in January, he's like, okay, I know you're resting. <laughs> I know you're resting. But um, there's something I think you need to take a look at. And I'm like, all right, let me see. And it, and then, uh, of course, it says, producer, Barry Jenkins. 
which is you know the 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 director from Moonlight who won the Oscar, right? He won the Oscar for Moonlight. Um, and it, but directed by um, Rachel, Rachel Morrison, and Rachel Morrison was is the only female cin, um, only female nominated only female cinematographer nominated for an Oscar. Okay, and she has done things like Mudbound with Mary J. Blige when Mary, Mary J. Blige got nominated for an Oscar. She did Cake with Jennifer Aston. She did um, Fruitvale Station with Michael B. Jordan. She also shot Black Panther with Ryan Coogler. She is the cinematographer for Black Panther. And so this was now her, her directorial debut. And she was doing a, a movie based on Clarissa Shields, who is the two-time Olympian winner for boxing. And she is, she's, she is the champion of female boxing in the world. And, but this was a time when she was young and she was trying to make a name for herself and, be, and boxing was introduced into, into the Olympics. And now she had to try to, she wanted to box her way out of the ghetto from Flint, Michigan. She was like, it was, she's in poverty and she needs to find a way out for her family and boxing was it. And so now this is the real life biopic of Chris Clarissa Shields. Barry Jenkins is producing it. Um, Rachel Morrison is, is the, the director. Universal was, Universal was a big studio. And then they, were, they came to Toronto um, to audition people. And, I, and then so my cousin was like, you should take a look at the role for Clarissa's mom, who plays Clarissa, Clarissa's mom. And I was like, I look at it, I'm like, yeah. Let's let's get it. <laughs> let's let's go. Right? Let's go. Right? So we go in. I go in and I and I throw down my thing. And then I'm like, you know, I leave it there and I go home and whatever. You know, weeks go by and whatever. And then I get the call. It's like, hey, um, yeah, like the director wants to see you or whatever. He wants to the director session. I was like, cool. But you're used to that director session. Okay, <laughs> they're determining who's gonna get the role. Blah blah blah. But I go there now. And I'm like, we're where's all the other actors? <laughs> uh, and they're like, oh no, Nikkei, this is just for you. Oh wow. Nice. Mr. Mabomba. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> Those who understood what you just you said know, just know, went, what? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's just for you. This is just to meet you. I'm like, Jesus. She's like, I'm like, I just wanted to see you. I just wanted to meet you and talk. I'm like, what the hell? So Americans do, Americans do things very different. Mm. Right? We're in Canada, they're just like, well, <laughs> Congratulations. Here's you got the, the job. Here's the PR we'll the money we're gonna give you. Lucky you got a job. That kind of thing. It's like, great, you're booked. Awesome. Show That's up. That's it. That's we're, it. Two thumbs Americans up. Were like, she's, and I was like, oh, okay. She's like, so I just want to ask you about your life. And like, I want to know your journey. I'm like, what? what? what and she's like do you mind do you mind if i take this and i'm like no she's like i know you have a daughter like i have been researching you and i just tell me tell me about your life huh. an hour and a half later we're all bawling in the room oh, she's wow. like, like i am so excited to work with you and that's it that's wow. probably the best audition experience i've had so far, other than the next one, because other than the next one, you get to show you who they are, who you are, and why this means this much to you, and how long you've been pushing, and like you know, all the little moments, you know what I mean. And she was it just like, up, yeah. Wow, yeah, and just sit there, and she just like, oh. And it's like, I've got my person, and, and she also taped this, so she has all the footage, she has everything, like, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's been nothing but wonderful. And we started the film, we started the film before the lockdown, but we still have to go back to it. And this is a movie with Ice Cube. You know what I mean? Like these wow. are some heavyweights on this movie. There's some heavyweights on this film. 
And so I remember even like sitting down for just the read through, just the read through alone, just to sit with everyone and get to know everyone in the rehearsals. And I was like, that's, that's F and Ice Cube. That's Ice Cube. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, let me keep my cool. Let me chill out. It's okay. It's okay. And my I'm, daughter, I'm in it here. I did the work. Like, yeah, my daughter's texting me. She's like, calm down, calm <laughs> down. And I'm like, mm-hmm, yep. Mm-hmm. And then eventually I was like, he talked to me. He was like, you know, like, so like, oh, Mika, you know, like, you know, like, because they all get to see your work too, right? And Ryan Destiny, she's the person playing Clarissa Shields. And so she's an ingenue. She's coming out, right? Um, she's a phenomenal actress. And so we're all just sitting there and Ice Cube's like, you know, oh, you know, they saw the tape and like, it's nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know, I just, I just got to get this off my chest. So, uh, <laughs> so um, I did what, I must have done everything right to have, to come to this moment because Boys in the Hood is my all time favorite movie. Favorite. Yep. Yep. All time favorite movie. I will never forget it. And I have, I probably know all your dialogue. <laughs> I am so honored to be sitting here with you. And he was like, yo, for real? Like, <laughs> and then he starts to talk to me about his experiences with Boys in the Hood and going to cons and, you know, and he's like, all of us from the hood going to cons. And it's like, yo, Boys in the Hood in Paris. You, like, you know, like you're in, you're in like France or yeah, like right. you're doing your thing. And they're like, and we thought the next thing was gonna happen for the next film and it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, but this film, this film, this going comes. <laughs> and I was like, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> but they just, they had such a respect for me because they, they saw my work. They saw things before they got mm-hmm. to the because they're on another level. Right. So they want, mm-hmm. they also get um, a say in who they want to work with. And so mm-hmm. I was, I was blown away by how the Americans do it. That's, that's why experience. that's why most of our artists they start off here and then when you say hey how's that person oh they're in LA oh how's that person they're in Atlanta oh how's that person they're in New York I'm like okay I'm just gonna take my bag and go to New York <laughs> I mean, I, mean you can, you, I, I believe like I did the LA thing and whatever I did that I did that for a while and then I was like oh no 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 this can't be nah I literally left from there, went to Jamaica for a month, went to um, Nigeria for a month. And then when I came back from Nigeria, I, I applied to school. And then when I applied, because I was like, I just, I, I wasn't done with it, but I just needed to have something else to fulfill me. I needed some enrichment mm-hmm. so that I didn't feel like I was a part of the rat race. And from the, the moment I made a decision to go to school, because my, my family members were like, you know, you are in white man's land. You go, you get the opportunity and you bring it back to your land. You need to. And I was like, oh my God, that's awesome. So I went and I was like, I'm going to follow this advice. I'm a, an advice follower. And I did that. And uh, from I went into school, they were like, oh my God, she's not available? Why? <laughs> getting an, I'm busy getting an education. I'm Hold busy. on. <laughs> I'm busy. And so things just, the trajectory just changed. And um, yeah, and, and, and now we're here. And, and, I, and I see the future getting even better. And, and I love that. And I want to be able to usher in other people too. And it's time for me to wear different hats as well. Nice. nice. Mm-hmm. Black actors. This is the Black Actors and Film Guild of Canada. Yeah. You've heard it all. Producers, actors, actresses, makeup artists, hairstylists. Yeah. Michelle, I'm bringing you in. You can't go <laughs> nowhere. You're here. That's it. You're not going nowhere no more. So um, we have Issa Ken here. She's also a producer, director, Issa Ken eBay. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just amazing. So, amazing. guys, you've heard all the work that Miss Olunike has been doing. I'm going to mm-hmm. give you a few fun facts. You oh. can write them down, type them down, put it in your brain, cram it up, any which way, which way. I'm going to do the cahoots. You guys know me. I'm always doing cahoots. So get your second devices out. Fun fact. I was raised in Jamaica, which gave me my artistic foundation. I am a mother of a 25-year-old woman. Not girl, woman. And the Washington gave me my... my Denzel Washington gave me the advice to study drama. 
I take spiritual bubble baths daily for my self-care practice very important especially in this day and age self-care is very very important mm -hmm. i attended i attend university of toronto and majoring in african studies i used to be a backup dancer guess who can anybody guess no no christina mm -hmm. i mean come on <laughs> really you wait your guess. hand so Christina, <laughs> I've been obsessed with gold there fish you go. snacks Abby, for 25 Abby, years. Come on. Where's Abby? <laughs> she said it. <laughs> yes. What happened? No, no, no. That's no. right, Tori. Yes. They're not getting the answer, though. The question, she's, I, she used to be a backup dancer. But I, yeah. my question is, for who? She's so not going to back up herself. She's not going to back up herself. <laughs> See, I fooled them now, right? So they're thinking that it's just yeah, I did well. Okay. <laughs> and she's got an obsession, or she had an obsession with goldfish snacks. <laughs> if you know what goldfish is, that thing is golden and it's currency. In my no, house, really goldfish is, is currency. This is my it's second like, obsession. It's hard. And second <laughs> obsession. <laughs> That's what you see. Anything crackers. But goldfish, yes. Go for the rehearsals. You can't have one. You just can't have one. The 90s era for hip hop and R&B is her favorite genre. Yeah. I'm not going to repeat the era. That's the way the question is. I am a natural athlete and I play a lot of sport as a youth. So can you mention a couple of those? I know track and field is there. Oh, yeah. I was a sprinter, 100, 200 um long jump relay i was the anchor um basketball soccer badminton tennis skiing swimming yeah i, I was on oh, wow. almost most of the teams um so i was always the female the number one female athlete of my schools someone I, said oh shoot soccer, soccer. yes oh, she yeah. played soccer <laughs> that's what tore my that's what tore my acl on the left knee Oh no. Yeah, and then I had to get surgery here. for it. Yeah. Wow. But then mm -hmm. you have all these roles that are so strong. Like, I haven't seen you. Well, I shouldn't say that. Like, I purposely picked She Never Died yeah. as my backdrop because I was really intrigued by it, by your role in it. So if you haven't seen it or you need a clip of it, run over to IMDb. You're going to get it there. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what happened here. It's not playing, but you know what? It's all good. Whatever we wow. seen was good, though. Like, the little clips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, it's so do we have any fantastic. questions? It's a really, Anybody? really great film. It's a really great film. I'm so proud of it. So proud. It actually, what that film did for me, mm -hmm. It when I went to L.A. to premiere it, there were so many studios that were like, who the hell is she? Oh, my mm. God. Yeah, so it... It, it was able to garner me all my reps and um, and also for the reps to go to like whether Netflix, Showtime, Universal, Warner Brothers, when they when they were able to see me because they were also able to see me through the director because the director was going on all her meetings too. And they all were like, who is your actress? So that what that did for me, I mean, wow. Wow. That's great. Yeah, the right connections mm -hmm. um, and the people right that producers. believe in you, and it's that same director I told you that just happened to I that did one movie with her, and then she got hired onto this movie and was like, "I'm not doing the movie unless I secure Olenike is going to be my lead." And they were like, mm -hmm. "Okay, well, let's bend over backwards to get her." And I was chilling on a beach in Jamaica, and and she was like, "Please do this for me." And I was on American Gods at that time, and I said, "Well, as long as American Gods give you gives you the dates that you need." And it was really tough to kind of navigate the dates between the two sh the the show and the movie, and I literally had no days off, and so. And I had to travel six hours from one city to the next to be able to do both of them. So I slept in the car ride on the way from each set to the next six hours back and forth because I there was no days off. And it was, what an experience that was. 
and, and have to transition from one character to the next in the car while mm -hmm. learning the lines. Wow. That's, that's talent on a different level. <laughs> right? Right? That's, that's <laughs> talent on a different level. Like, or I dedication mean, to what, what <laughs> it is. Those things you don't forget, man. You're like, it's I'm intense. so tired. I never slept unless it was a bit a minute in a car. And it's wow. like, how do you do that? I go, because I was meant to tell stories. There you like, go. And I think that I don't take that lightly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do we have any comments, questions? Um we have a Anything. comment here that says intense. Intense is great. <laughs> Hi, Vivian. Thank you for staying up. I know it's about 2 or 3 a.m. right now, but thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Nikkei. Aww. Bless your heart. Your right? heart all over. We love you so much. And you know what? Left to me and you, since we're not going anywhere, right? Yes. Be here forever. But, you know, we have to take <laughs> into consideration everybody's time and everything. So um, do we have any questions, comments? Mr. Gabriel, Kemi, Moko, Ovi Purple. You are quiet, Ovi Purple. <laughs> Hi Ovi, what's up? Well, I'm cool, very, very cool. Uh, just been listening um, along and all that. But gr great stuff, um, Olunike. Mm -hmm. You've really gone a long way. Thank you. Thank well, you but so I'd like to ask you. I'd like to ask one question, though. I don't know if this should be private or public, but. Um, is it okay if you share your agency with someone, maybe me or something? <laughs> oh, of course, of course. My, um, my, well, my agency is Shortlist. Shortlist, shortlist. Uh, yeah, Shortlist. It's called Shortlist um, um, Artist. Shortlist Artist. Okay, great, great, yeah. great. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, no, of course. Okay, That's okay so, Olunike, when you, next time you're on, say, you'd be like, oh, that's the guy who has that question. Now I know why you asked that question. Exactly. That's hey, okay. why not, right? Why not? We're all here yeah, to network, connect, and everything. So that that's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I will be sharing her IG. If you're not following her, I don't know why you're not following her, but you need to follow. And then, of course, she's gonna follow you back. Um, any other questions? Olunike is beautiful. My first time hearing from her. So that's um, Kemi, she's from the US. I believe she's in Maryland. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay. Ibe is here with us. I just unmuted her. She's a director producer here in Toronto as well. Blaze, thank you for joining us. Where's Blaze? All right, thank you. Hi guys, sorry I'm in the store. I should be joining you guys in another few minutes. Okay, all right. Okay, Blaze, sorry about that. I unmuted both of you at the same time. That was mm -hmm. Okay, yes, uh, my name is Blaze, and um, I'm also a part of a um, bag. So I guess I will just have to ask one question, just one question though. So my question goes thus. Um, if it wasn't for acting, what other profession would you have chosen? I would probably be a travel host. <laughs> I would travel for a living and like see what the different spas in the world are and different cultures. And in fact, you know, like someone um, approached me and said that they wanted to do a show like that. And I was like, oh my God, I wanted to do a show like that. And we just, we, we met on a project recently, like literally maybe a couple days ago. And like where I had to just, it was just me and a puppy. I was just acting with just me and a puppy, um, which is a gold mind for an actor because you know, there's no acting required. It's an animal and animal is gonna give you everything. And so <laughs> I just, the, 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 camera, um, the camera girl who was, um, is also nominated for a Canadian Screen Award like I am. She's like, I've got this idea for this show. And I'm like, oh my God, I've always wanted to do that. And so now we're gonna try and collaborate and get that and see if we can like really kind of put something like that together of just travel and see what spas are like in different parts of the world. And it's not necessarily mainstream or luxurious spas. It has everything to do with 
um, rituals and practices of self-care. Mm -hmm. yeah. right, so that, that would put me to this question. So uh, now you're now you're acting. So you at some point maybe you want to retire or something. Do you have any other No, you I do? never want to retire ever. <laughs> Okay, that's so aside, so aside that's from acting, do you have any other thing you would higher. want to accomplish? Aside well, from that's, the thing is, that's the thing is, acting gives you that leeway of where you never have to retire. I never have to, ever, until I'm dead. Did, did Cicely Tyson retire? <laughs> that's the career I want. Mm. As well as live my life. Living her life like it's gold and living her living life, life like it's gold. Living her life like it's gold. I believe, I gold, right? like I, gold, I believe you're also a part of us, right? Mm -hmm. Like after this, we also welcoming you to be a part, part of, of the Black Actors Guild. Black Actors Guild, Guild Canada. Mm -hmm. Say that again. I can't hear your question. Like it's not a question. Like after this, we I want to believe we're welcoming you to be a part, like a member of the Black Actors Guild Canada. Oh, mm -hmm. well, thank you. Thank you. Our family here is welcoming you on. Oh. <laughs> yes. I am honored. I am honored. Keep on going, girl. So um, someone said, or someone just asked, can you speak any other languages apart from English? I Patois. remember. Patois. 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 Yo, my day in so wait for my husband in the house, you know. Okay. No one's there, I'll wind up with it, man, thing and... Oh, yeah. <laughs> See that yes. flip? You gotta, no. be, you gotta know it to know it. You yes, gotta please. be versatile. Um, <laughs> Baby, do you have a question? I actually have to do a role that <laughs> requires me to speak Patois um, next week in Calgary. In Calgary. Oh. And I remember, wow. like, oh, I remember when I got like the, the, the audition for it and it was like, <laughs> it's like, you don't have to do the, you don't, she's Jamaican, but you don't mm -hmm. have to be, you don't have to do this uh, accent or the, the, the patois. It comes natural. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> my husband heard it. He's like, yo, that's what I'm picking up. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, coming from him. All right. <laughs> True. Like, oh, uh, can we get her? Yeah, it was, yeah. Those things are um those accents or any sounds of any kind of black culture anywhere in the world, those are easy for me. Nice. Those are those actually elevate my acting more so than just plain English. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna go learn everything learnable. The British accent, everything learnable. American <laughs> accent. Patwa, Michelle, I'm coming to you for that. All right. <laughs> but like Viola Davis said that these schools need to stop teaching black actors, like that we gotta learn like British and Scottish That's and right. all these white accents where yeah. we should be learning Caribbean and African accents. Exactly. So like, yeah. All right. <laughs> right? Okay, so we're gonna go to Bibi. Bibi has a question. Actually, um comment. A, not a question, it's a comment. Okay. Nikki, I don't know if you remember you. Do you remember me at all? No, we Please met refresh my memory and I apologize for not knowing. That's okay. That's okay. I look totally different right now. Um, so we met when you hosted, um, or when you were at MC at uh, Afro Global Television's uh, uh, award ceremony. Um, that was mm -hmm. 29, was that 2019? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 2019. Yes. And so we met there. I was one of the runners who was helping the guests and the um, award recipients to come up to the stage and just helping people get seated and all whatnot. Yeah. And so I, um, I met you there and before I actually met you before the day, um, Patricia told me about you and, um, you know, I'd seen your picture, but I'd never seen any of your work. So I'm like, oh, wow, this is amazing. And then when you showed up with all your outfits, I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, and then um, thereafter, I saw you in, um, uh, is it Working Moms? I think. Yes. Moms, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, all right. You know, so because when Patricia told me about you, I didn't, I hadn't seen any of your work prior to then. But our meeting was very nice. I mean, you were very pleasant, you know, oh. and you were just full of razzmatazz. 
you know. So <laughs> that was very nice. Uh, it was very nice to meet you, and it's great to have listened to you tonight and um, learned a couple of things, you know, from you. And so just a pleasure to see a Black woman in the industry, um, you know, scaling up, moving up, just uh, doing one great uh, project after the other. And it's such a source of inspiration and encouragement for those of us who are coming up uh, in the ranks. Yeah, so thanks for being here. And uh, you've given us so, so much, so much, which is awesome. Thank you so Thank much, Phoebe. That means the world to me. Thank you yeah. so much. All right, so it's okay. I'm coming back to you because I want to give you like massive. <laughs> Mr. Gabriel, you have your hand up. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Um, Gabriel is our lead. Hold on. I have to semi-introduce you. Hold on. So Mr. Gabriel here is um, the lead in our short film, Love in Transition, which we filmed just before the first lockdown. And um, it's, it's amazing. We're going to be doing a screening tomorrow, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it, it was such, it, it was an interesting and um, very... It was kind of stressful because of all the COVID restrictions. We got to do this. We got to do that. But um, we're done and it's ready and we can't wait to watch it. So, okay, back to you, Gabriel. All okay. right. Hi. Um, it's really nice to, to hear you, your journey and all that. It's really inspiring. And I, I just have a question. Mm -hmm. So in this in this business, right, How how do you maximize your potentials and, and what i mean by that is okay for me i'll use myself as an example i'm an actor and at the same time i'm, I'm really obsessed about cinematography meaning mm -hmm. i i work i've worked on a couple of stores as a dp but then i i'm also an actor like i mean I, i've got the skills i started as an actor anyways mm -hmm. so how do you how do you maximize your potentials knowing you can do, you're pretty comfortable both sides. So how do you, how do you maximize that to like get yourself going? You do your own projects. That's what you do. Anytime you want to maximize anything, because remember like we are, if you are trying to get into an industry that is run by the people that don't look like you or don't represent you, it's going to be a long haul. It's not to say not, not to do it, but I always like to give the advice of if they don't have, if they won't invite you to the table that you need to build your own. So if you want to be able to do what you want to do with um, acting, cinematography, first of all, you can do that in, in whatever, you need to understand that you can do that in whatever realm you want to. You know what I mean? This is your life, huh? This is your life. You have one time to do it the way you want to. So no matter what, you can't, you, other people are trying to put limitations on you. You cannot yeah. at any time put limitations on you. And if you go out for a cinematographer job as opposed to an actor yeah. job, it don't matter. You have to believe that you could do it more than anyone else. If you don't believe that, if you don't believe you could do it, it's already, a, it's like, it's done in the water. But what I would say in order to maximize, cause you're asking me about maximizing on something. Yeah. Make your own projects. That allows you to be the cinematographer and the actor. And right now, I would say Black people, Black professionals, Black creatives, we have the power right now. Mm -hmm. If there's anything that this pandemic has done, has, is, is empower us. We mm -hmm. are able to speak in any space that we are. So any inhibitant that we had with like, oh, I don't want to do this or say that because it might cost me something this is the time to speak up and have your voice. Because right now the world cannot look away because it's, they're confronted with the fact that we have been put in a place of lack for a long time. 
And now they're trying to make up for that. Mm-hmm. And that's why a lot of us are booking jobs left, right, and center is because they're, they don't, the, the vase, what I speak of, is the white world, the white privileges. They don't want to look racist. Yep. Mm. So now is the time to literally step over or plow through them. So now grants are happening. Things are happening. Oh, what can we do for this diversity plan? It's because they don't want to seem racist. Mm -hmm. So right now, take advantage. So if you are a cinematographer, take advantage. If you are an actor, take advantage. If you're a director, take advantage. There's so many initiatives going on right now. It's like, if you're a diverse actor, we're going to give you like, you know, a place in it. You know what I mean? And first of all, we don't even need you to be creative. We are out of the womb creative. Before we were born, it's written. We are creative people. The world cannot actually run on any creation unless we're in it because it's taken from us. So as long as we understand that, that we are the cornerstone of being creative in all realms, all realms, we take the power back. Somebody said, preach. <laughs> Point on. Preach, sister. <laughs> right. So you've got to know that going into any space. It's not like, please, sir, give me a job. No, I'm here. I'm here. What do you need? Or how can you help me? You, you can't show up with the feeling of lack or that, oh, you know, they've got all the answers or they've got all the power. I don't show up that way. I just don't show up that way. I used to, and my own, my own child said that to me. She's like, it's nice to see where you went from the begging place to owning who you were. Mm. And that's my own offspring that knows me better than anyone. Wow. Own it, take it. And it's, it's your maximize, make your own jobs, make your own thing. It's time we we take the, we take the Oscars and we take it all out of their hands. Like get out of here. You know what I mean? I don't know about y'all, but I was pissed off as hell when Chadwick didn't win. I was like, how in the hell did you miss that ball? How could you (laughs) miss that ball? Mm. That means you, like you don't give two craps about what Mm. that, you know, that win would have been not only for Blacks, but it would have been for the entire globe, mm-hmm. for every human that is in the globe. Everybody would have been in a standing ovation that would have created even more unity. And listen, Anthony Hopkins is absolutely fantastic, but he already got one, first of all. <laughs> he already has one. And he yeah. was asleep in his bed, had to be woken up to even <laughs> to even get word. But like Chadwick, there was a movement that was created around who he was, what he meant to us as a black community, but to us as human human beings. And the fact that they missed the ball on that, that means that that particular thing is literally the lesson to say, create your own and stop waiting on them to give you crumbs. Get out of here, man. That antiquated business of accolades for, you know, to uplift white supremacy is over. Mm-hmm. And we all have to recognize that. That is old antiquated businesses or industry that is not relevant anymore. Their numbers were less than 10 million. This not relevant anymore. Wow. Ouch. So guys, go get it. Go get it. It's yours for the taking. Um, mm-hmm. Abby, Abby says in here, sorry, or having an imposter, imposter syndrome, we have to know who we are. That's from Kemi. So there you have it, guys. Straight from, for lack of better words, the princess's mouth. I'm not going to say the horse's mouth. Straight from Malunike's mouth. Okay, so we're going to break up. Don't leave. Get your devices ready. I'm going to share my screen. Mm-hmm. Um, Olunike, let's see how well you know yourself. Oh. You join us. <laughs> so get your device out. Let, let's have some fun. Let's do this, and we'll come back to 
the remaining comments, questions, and we will gracefully end the session. Um, it's nine o'clock now. Um, it, I mean, if it's okay with you guys, give us another 10, 15 minutes and we'll wrap up. Okay? Are we good? Thumbs up? Yes. So what do we do now? What do I do? We're going into play game Cahoots. So you're going to need another device to log in. I'm going to oh. share my screen and you're going to have the pin number to join the game. Oh, wow. All right. I can't participate in that. I'm driving. Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. But it's a wonderful, it's wonderful being here. Okay, where is my kid? I'm going to use the bathroom. Anybody that's leaving, come back on time because you know my computer has been behaving. <laughs> So, Christina, any comments so far while this is loading? No, I haven't seen anything as of right now. Um, not just following up with that award with Cheswick is my opinion. Okay. And, of course, um, talking about awards, I have a little tidbit for you guys, and I would like you all to... Um, make sure that not only as a nominee, Olunika takes home the Canadian Screen Awards for her performance in the drama series, Cor is it Corona? No, it's um, Corona. So if you haven't seen that, please watch that as well. Um, she's being nominated and for 2021, and we are taking this home. All right. Can you use the washroom? No washroom break. This game is loading. <laughs> All right. We'll wait for you for a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Here you have it. Your um, pin number is 891-8720. So you use your phone. Uh, if you don't have the app, you can go on www.kahoot.com. K A H O O T dot I T. So, wait, we have to leave this thing? Oh, are you using your phone? No, I'm right on now? the iPad. Okay, so if you have your phone, you can use your phone to um, log in. Wait, I, oh, I have to play this game too? Well, you can join us, but maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I, mean, <laughs> you I think I, that's cheating. You, you're going, you get Gloria, Staga, Gabs, Blaze. That would be totally cheating. Just this once. Nope, 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 nope. Tolu, Taiwo, okay, 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 we're getting there. So we're just going to wait a few minutes for Mr. Ovi. Baby, we're waiting for you. <laughs> Although I've never played Kahoots before. I don't know how to play. Okay, get another device. Join online at www.kahoot.it. Alrighty, I'll follow along. Okay, so once you get into kahoot.it, it'll ask you for a game pin. There was a lot of people that were saying that the, the ID pin wasn't working. 891-8720. The game pin is up here, if you can see my screen. OK, are we good with the pin? Yeah, listening in is fine as well. Okay. All right, all right, all right. People, okay. Thanks. So I cannot join. In. Okay, that's fine. Mr. Olabi, thank you. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. You're at work and you're still able to join. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Who said I'll just no, Kemi, you gotta join. Just go to kahoot.it <laughs> and put in your pin number. It's gonna be fun. It's real easy questions, I promise. We'll give Mr. Ovi a few more seconds and then we will start. <laughs> Bibi, what happened? My name just disappeared off the screen. Sorry, but it's on my phone though. Yeah, I think it's your phone. It says I'm in. I don't see you. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Blank. Okay, all right, so we're going to start. And get ready. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, babe, what are you doing? Oops. What are you doing? Wow, guys, was nobody listening this evening? <laughs> All right, moving on to the next one. Let's see who's at the top. Troll four. Tolu is getting all these. Huh. Who is Tolu? All right. What is a oh, <laughs> English name? Dorothy, Queenie, Wendy, Sarah? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I, I'm curious to know. Wow. Queenie. Oh, well, she is a queen. Hey. hey. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Was it is it Queenie? No, it's Wendy. Oh. Why why wasn't it Queenie? Well, let me take it. <laughs> so Un Unike did a silhouette dance on a radio show. True or false? True or false? False or true? Hey. They heard it in my voice. I, I think I should stop talking because they heard it. Yeah, stop doing that. <laughs> Don't give out any more. <laughs> okay. So what did she study in university?
Hey. Who said accounting? Do you want her to come and do your taxes? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> right? All right. We're almost there. Bla wow, Blaze. Huh. Blaze is blazing. True or false? She used to be a backup dancer. said false that must be a newcomer because hmm blaze is hot so he's going true to his name blaze three in a row my god true or false <laughs> Obviously, those two people are, are late comers. <laughs> they knew, they knew. <laughs> wow, Blaze and Blaze and Gabs. Wow. All right. Okay. Let's do this. We have two more questions to go. Okay, that's supposed to say who gave her advice to study grammar. Oprah? <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Simpson? Come on. Well, two people did say Jessica Simpson. That's so. what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I, I'm shocked. Late commas, late commas. Ah, Blake, hmm, Gaz is on fire now. All right. Gummies, chicken patty. Wow. No, I have to call it the chicken patty because I have, it's been a while since I've ever heard about the chicken patty. <laughs> you know, Jamaicans, but I don't, I've never seen the chicken patty before, but it's a good one. Goldfish. Yep. And potato chips. How do you guys know she doesn't like, okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. That's the end of our game for tonight. So Woo! coming in third in place, Kempster. Blaze, thank you. I knew it. Spotlight. Oh, Look at the spotlight. Deborah. My spotlight. God. Where is he? 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 Yeah. I came in late. I would have won this game. I knew it. I knew it. You came in second now. You still came in second. I had network issues. You see? I am so very hopeful you can do it. <laughs> come on guys you still can, you came in second place come on now uh, up on, up on, up on let's come on eh? I, I, I played the fifth as well I came in late oh, wow. I one. It's so note yourself <laughs> next time. time when we start at 7 show up at 6.45 maybe there's some expo you know when you're doing Nigeria, um, exams in Nigeria and they are ah, expo 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 you come in early, you I might know, get expo. I received my gift. No gift. No, it was TJ know. that won. It was TJ that won. I, I remember won. that. <laughs> I won. All right. So thank you, everyone, for participating. Um, Gabs, I do have a gift for you. If I show it to everybody here, huh, fight my statue. Let me just keep it between you. Don't, don't <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go to Isoken now. I know I kept you on hold for a little bit, so please go ahead. Isoken, can you hear me? Okay. Ay, thank you. We appreciate you. Thanks for coming in. Um, Isoken, I'm not sure if she can hear me. Thank you, David BBM, for showing up. I know you're just coming in from work, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So does anybody else have any other comments, questions, um, 
anything at all that you want to say that you'd like to say Ms. to Ms. Alunike Adili before we wrap it up? So we have all the information we need. You don't need to contact her. You won't ask me for her IG information. You won't ask me for this. You ask me for that. I will charge you if you ask me after this meeting. You already said you were going to give it to us. I will charge extra if You're after all this meeting all about the money you money ask money. me for it. <laughs> Five days ago. Pardon me? Huh. I said, you, you, this is what you did two Fridays ago. When you wanted Every to Friday that I come on live, if okay. you don't get the information that you want now, I will so, charge you afterwards. Folks, we, look, we need to look into Fulu's matter, man. Uh, it's a money thing. <laughs> Mr. Lidike, tell them. It's, <laughs> sign on the dotted line. It's a money thing. <laughs> But yes, we de we definitely need her ID. We need her contact. Okay, let, I'm gonna post it here. Hmm, let me see. At hmm, O L U N I K. Oh yeah, pay me for the rest. Uh, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm gonna get it. Pardon me. Sorry, Christina, did you say something? No, I was just agreeing to that. I said that I said, right? <laughs> ah, there you go. You, you know, something happened time. on the way to. This experience was really good. I really mm -hmm. did. We really enjoyed you being here. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you don't understand. It's been good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I've posted Thank her so. IG on there. Please check her out on IMDb as well. All her work is on there. Um, you can connect to her either through her IG or through her agent or through myself. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm sliding into that agent role. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, we, we always try to make sure that our evenings are fun and exciting. And also that we do learn from our guests because they've been there. They can tell us what to look out for and some of the trade secrets or industry secrets as it may so um connect with her if you have any questions if you have a role for her connect with me just kidding connect with her <laughs> and, and um you never know uh we we call we are the black actors and film guild of canada um mm -hmm. we try to do a lot of work with other black actors nollywood actors and i was going to ask you i forgot earlier um nollywood Poluka, Poluka, hey, Poluka, I'm here. Don't go there. No, I just want to ask. A, just hold on. I'm hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait. Yes. Wait. No, there's on, a question. Wait, wait. wait. I'm not. The no, the wait. The question. I know. It's okay. It's one is one side. Mine is totally different. <laughs> no, no, no. I just want to know. Yes. know. No, no. No. Who's going to ask the Nollywood question? Listen. You won't forget that I'm the host. Yeah, yeah. So I will watch you. <laughs> okay. No, my question regarding Hollywood, Nollywood is just um, two actors, two male, two female that you'd like to work with from Nollywood. Oh, you know what? I would love to work with Lala Kidaju. She's so yeah. funny. She's got the theater, and I love. I'm a theater person, so. I would love to work with her. She she's got really great um, comedy and dramatic chops. She's so yeah, great. Yeah. Um, I would love to work with. Um, yeah. Two male and two female. Eh? I would yeah. love to work with Dayemi. I know that. Okay. Yeah, Dayemi is is great too. I just love my theater, but I mean, I find that Nigerian actors are theater and film. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, two I, male. I, met, I, I remember I met with Gen Genevieve because I really wanted to work with Genevieve. Um, I uh, I met with her a couple of years ago in Toronto because I wanted her to I wanted to um her to mentor and usher me into the Nollywood business. So she'd be a wonderful person that I would I would like to, but I'm I'm wondering if maybe she's too high for me. You know, she's up there. <laughs> You never know. You, the wind blows anywhere. So there might be somebody here on this live 
who yes. has the direct link. So speak it into the world. Speak it up. Speak it's it into the universe. Right. And it's um but but I'm I'm always always very uh, like and even um um Zena Balowagon, I love her. I think she's fantastic. I just want to work with people who are who are coming up. You know what I mean? People uh, because I want to work with people who are who are up and coming because for me, if I'm in, if I do anything Nollywood, I am up and coming. Mm. I'm not in a place of where I am higher than anyone else at all. Okay. I am in a place where I am. I have to start um, at the bottom and and rise. And so I would like to rise with the newcomers. That's that's my take on it. I don't, you know, Genevieve is up there. Like I said, she's up there. It's only because I approached her really, but it's not, but, but if I had my choice, it would be somebody who is, is rising because I'm rising too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would like to earn my keep. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to ever come into that situation. I mean, that is Nollywood. Nollywood has been there. It's been built. It's an institution. It's 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 prominent. It's fantastic. It's powerful. I I can't even like I remember even just going to Nigeria for the first time and going to a cinema and going, what? This is amazing. You know what I mean? I want to be able to come in there humbled and and be and and earn my keep and not have to I don't want to come in there like oh yeah she does Hollywood films and like you know I don't want to be seen that way I want to I want them to see my work okay. cool. so the two guys my work <laughs> the guys like I said like I love Dayemi I think he's fantastic he's fantastic um the um, let me see. I don't like for guys. For like, I don't really think of guys most so. I usually think of directors. I usually think of directors. Like I love um I love uh Jude Itada. You know, I think he's fantastic. There's also the direct um what what uh, it's it's crazy. It's names that I'm that's escaping me, but I know their work um, because I follow them all. There's the gentleman that did um, the director that did um, the the Royal Hibiscus Hotel. What is his name? It is I forget what his name is. Niyi Akimalayo. Right. But there, there's also the director that did that 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 film with Genevieve that she her and her it was a, a road what the road to yesterday yes okay. yeah road to yesterday I, I really it. loved that film nice 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 yeah so we have your four. Okay, that's yeah. That's what good. Is that, that's four, good four is too small because I guess there's <laughs> that's why I four, said four so that we we hone it down small. a little bit. I have my I have my desires to work in, um, but I, I I watch everybody and I watch to see where where my talent sits. You know, yeah. because I mean, I have a friend um, who is a uh, bio um, Akin Fimi. He's on um, Bob Hassan. Um, yeah. Yes. And so we've always wanted to do a comedy. We've all we've been we've talked about it for a year. It's been a decade of that. We've always wanted to write a comedy um, based on the Nigerian industry and what it takes to make a film. <laughs> but, the com but the comedy of that, right? The comedy of that. And uh you know, yeah, I would like to even maybe even go into Nollywood um, producing, writing a film. Hmm. I think that would be, that would be, I think that would be the best choice is, is like, e like, because if I'm an actor, I'm, I want to go with no one knowing me and just me working my way up from, from the base. But if I, and the only other way, which I think is the, the best way is to go in producing um, 
and writing and creating jobs too, right? Nice. Producers, directors, actors. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because I, I would love to do that. I just I picked up, I just picked up like three nuggets right there. And I'm neither a producer, mm -hmm. a director, or an actress. So right. Do you did you hear when like when, when Chappelle was speaking to Naomi Campbell just the other day on her no filter and he was saying, I would love to do a Nollywood film? <laughs> Dave Chappelle. Yeah, yeah. He said he, he's willing to do that. And I was like, that, it. <laughs> that is big. What yeah. is the attraction all of a sudden to Because Nollywood? you can do what the hell you want. You walk. Wow. <laughs> That's exactly what the attraction is. And that, but it's like you can do what the hell you want, and people are actually going to watch because you have. The, the demographic, there's, it's, it's, it's vast. There's so many people in, it's not just Nigeria, it's the continent. continent of Africa. Thank you, Olunike. So, for, right, it's the continent, you have that. the numbers. What yeah. you have is the numbers, what you lack is the amount of theaters. Thank you. You're right, so if you had the, like if there was some way for more theaters to be built, like Hollywood have, would have nothing on, on them, nothing. Because Hollywood is all about the numbers. It's all about the theaters and clocking those numbers. So if you had the theaters, what, what like, they, they, like the whole continent, you, the whole continent of Africa has all the numbers. Imagine everybody going to the theater to go and see these films. Where would Hollywood have any power? None. It would take it right back to the black people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone said, "I yes, I yeah, did." He was talking about spending a hundred thousand dollars. Olu um, that was is that a lot of money? Well, to, to Chappelle, it's not a lot of money, but like, like oh, spending a hundred thousand. Yeah, okay. he said, "I'd like give up hundred thousand dollars and see what Nigerians do with it." They would. They would film the hell out of that movie. Yeah. <laughs> they would film the hell Bingo out of that movie. Hi, Alushi Thank you for joining. Thank you for putting your video on. It's okay. Don't leave. Oh, don't just stay where you are. Can I, can I say something? Can I say something? Okay, real quick, and then we'll go to Olu. Yeah. Guys, uh, let's, okay, just um, something real quick. It's 9.30, yeah, yeah. just so that you guys know. If you're okay with it, I'm okay with it. If you guys are okay with it, I'm good with it. So, But if you have to leave, I understand. Okay, go ahead. So, like, um, what you were saying, uh, you trying to get into uh, Nollywood, I think right now is, is the best time to do it. You could even start here in Canada. Of you course. Know, so right now is the time to put on the, the hat of a producer and mm -hmm. produce up-and-coming talent in, and, you know, to showcase them to, you know, the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. you know, like, even right here, I believe there are countless of talents black african talents mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know so right like the comedy stuff you talked about you know you can always come up with something get a writer write stuff and throw out an audition you know and that gives insight to like a whole lot of talents out there that are not even known yet mm -hmm. you know so that's just my my suggestion you know mm -hmm. i find um nigerians to be so darn funny they're so funny <laughs> so funny and and jamaicans i i want to make a film that incorporates both don't worry yeah. Nika, we got you don't worry <laughs> i thought yeah, there's producers and directors on this forum that's yeah. i've put out her ig guys if you call me for that ig <laughs> i'll give olivike zero percent i keep hundred percent Wow. You know what? <laughs> I'm not sure about that. But... Right? I can't behind me. Look at me. I'm not even sharing the proceeds with my co-host. How selfish. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> my God. All right. So, um, it's okay. Two more, two more seconds. I'm going to go to Olusha Bowale. Hi, Mr. Okay. Olu. You're live. Did you want to, I think, did you want to say something earlier? No? Uh, 
Okay, Issa can go ahead. Hi, Lou. Hello, Nikkei. Well Hi. done. Well done. Uh, thank you. Unfortunately, I can't have my my video on because of where I'm, I am. But um, I think you can see my beautiful face. <laughs> yeah, I've I've had you. Um... Lisa, can where's your video? Where's your you're muted, Lisa? Can. Oh, did she get cut off? Okay, she's back. Okay, sorry, there's a call trying to come in. Oh. Hello? Yes? Okay, sorry, there was a call trying to come in. Yeah, I think it was the uh, IG Live with uh, uh, Bear Me, and um, you spoke about Nollywood and... Um, and um, your love for Nollywood. Mm -hmm. And um, I know I came in a little bit late, but everything you've said have been amazing. You've not only spoken from um, from a place as an actor, but you've, you've touched about produ uh, production, film production, and all the, um, all the shenanigans around. Um, yeah. Filmmaking. One key thing you said was create and own your space. Yeah. That I have heard before from John Taylor. Mm -hmm. When you create, own it. Own every bit of it. And that for you to have such an opportunity um, of ownership then you must create mm -hmm. because that's the only way you can have that full um, control of um, you know what you want to see and as well as the money making aspect of, of, of the business as well um, I just want to say thank you thank you for showing up the way you have shown up today in your authentic self with no filter, mm -hmm. um, I respect that because sometimes we we have people that hasn't even gotten up to where you you've been and still attaining um, right now, and they think that you know um, I'm just too busy to even have that time. Yeah. If, you, if you are to get into Nollywood today, what are the things that you think you will like to change? Oh, that's a good question. First of all, I wouldn't want to change anything mm -hmm. because Nollywood was there before me. <laughs> right? And so... That's a system that works for Nollywood and I am not the person to come in as some kind of, they call them, you know, it's like going into, when people go into like Haiti or go into third world countries and say, you know, I'm gonna be here and I'm gonna save this country from all of, you know, like it's, it's the hero complex. I don't have that. I like Nollywood just the way it is. You know, it took me a while to adjust to get to understand what it was and how they do things. And I appreciate and respect it. So I would change nothing. Now, how I would want to approach it for myself is to... Okay, okay, before, yeah. before you answer that, let's mm -hmm. say, what would you bring into Nollywood? That's a great question. That's a great question. I would bring into Nollywood the thirst to find the stories that are not necessarily glamorous. Thank you. 
I'm, I'm, I mean, glam is fun. It's great. It's there. I mean, sure. Maybe I'll do it once in, in, you know, my life or a few times and sure. It's great. It's, you know, everybody deserves their story, but I'm interested in the stories that change actual people's lives. The stories that are not told, the stories that people are ashamed of, um, that never see the light of day because it's, it's deemed as not important or invisible. Um, yeah, there are so many stories. And there's also, and it's not necessarily a story of pain. It's, it could even be a, just a simple story of just somebody living their lives. Tell me why that isn't interesting, of how somebody just very simple lives their life every day. I mean, we, we get to see white people do it all the time. Yep. We get to see white people do stuff all the time, uh, them, them and their dog or their goldfish, you get what I'm saying? Or falling in love or just simple stories. Why is it that we can't have those simple stories too? And you know that it's a, those are global stories. Those are global stories of taking your kid to the dentist. We all have do the same things. And yes, we have different struggles. Mm -hmm. um, but I would like to, tell stories that are that you don't you don't necessarily see told ones that touch your heart to change it ones that make people feel that they're not alone yeah one that speaks to their relevance one that re uh, stories that represent someone who never thought they'd ever be represented um story type story writers script yeah. writers are you writing all this down yeah. <laughs> okay and there's so many there's so <laughs> many you just have to all you have to do is listen to somebody because a lot of times we spend time a lot of times we spend moments not living the moment we don't listen we don't hear we you know because everybody likes to talk over everyone right so they mm -hmm. most times people aren't listening and for actors mm -hmm. it's detrimental to listen. You always know when the, the, the real actors and the writers when they're around because they're the ones that are like eavesdropping on everybody's life in order to get some information <laughs> in order for the art, right? You always know them. It's, it's simple, like the real ones, right? So those are the, those are the, the moments I would like to tell. Those are the stories of the moments I would like to tell. There's so many. I mean, I watch foreign film constantly, like Nigerian film constantly. Did you, did you guys see um, Atlantis? Yes. Right. There you go. I didn't even know where that story was going to take me, but I was there for the journey. <laughs> I was there for the journey and I went, oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, you know, and then you start following what what else does that director do? What else does that writer do? What else? And so, you you relate to people who tell stories that um, invoke emotion in you that you never thought you had or you know you had, but no one was representing. Um, yeah, when tell stories that change lives, I'm not interested in those in the in the flaky stuff anymore. You know, and the flaky stuff is for what you need when you're trying to like build a name. And then when you build a name, you gotta like really go for the juicy stuff that helps to change lives. Nice. Because I believe actors, writers, directors, producers, any creators right now that have had all these wonderful people sit in front of the screen and watch all the stuff for uh, over a year, those are essential workers. Yes. Yes. We are essential workers. We have literally saved humanity. We've saved mm. people from hanging themselves from a tree because they can't deal anymore. Yeah, you're right. You know, being in lockdown is not an easy thing. At least they can watch humanity. I, we are essential workers, period. I don't care what nobody says. Oh yeah, Artists right. very true. Very, people. very true. You're 100% right. You're 100% right.
Yeah. And for everyone, and for everyone that, is, that is on this call, if we've never seen ourselves like that before, I think we should start seeing ourselves like that. Mm -hmm. And if possible, after tonight, let us all have something up on our social media platform saying we are um, essential. Essential workers. So let's yes. go and have the uh, um, and tag everyone. Let's go. Let's do this. Yeah. Hashtag entertainers are essential workers. Absolutely. Yep. So let's let's get the conversation rolling. That's if it. people never saw it like that, let them start seeing it. Mm-hmm. Okay. We literally, we are literally saving lives. Oh, yeah. yes, I believe that because last night I was just like, what else is there to do? Can't go out. I can't even walk down the street to my park, my yeah. backyard. I don't know if my neighbor is going to sneeze. And so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so what's on Netflix? What's well, on Amazon what? Prime? What's, what's going on? Having a ritual. I started saying, you know, like, I want to, like, Daniel, um, uh, Daniel uh, Kaluuya was doing it too. He was like, okay, we're in lockdown. I'm going to watch a movie a day. And I started taking up that practice. I watch a movie, I try to watch a movie a day. I watch a movie a day. I, I, I block it out because, I mean, I get up at 4 a.m. And then I do devotion and all my rituals, of praying to the ancestors, praying to God, do all the things that I need to do, bless mm -hmm. myself, affirmations, journal from four to six. And then I, then I feed my family, get their lunches, pack them, they're out. You know what I mean? And then I have that day and then I'm like, okay, from this window to this window, I'm going to read aloud today. Like, you know, for half an hour, an hour, just reading aloud and practicing to pronounce and enunciate my words and just, just read a story. Right. And then, mm -hmm. then I have a time where, um, then another part I would, I'll, I'm going to, for the next two hours, I'm going to watch a movie. I'm going to try to watch a movie a day. What's there? Foreign film. There's so many different films. Like, or a short film. I just, uh, what did I do yesterday? I watched, uh, was it uh, The Strangers movie? What's it called? Opposite, what's it called? I think you're correct. The Strangers. It, it, won, a, it won an Oscar. Yes, The Strangers. I was like. Oh, it's really good. <laughs> oh, damn. Mm -hmm. And it was only half an hour. So that's what we're going to be doing now, guys. Stranger you things. filmmakers, you filmmakers, film you need to watch imagine just dedicate two hours or, or, or an hour and a half or however long it takes. Watch a film a day. We're in a lockdown. We're in a, what's going on. Really watch a film a day. What, do, what will that do to enhance things? And that's what I, I've been doing that for, uh, two weeks now. Watch a film a day. Okay. Good stuff. So, wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You're welcome. We appreciate you. We appreciate the work you're doing. I love the fact that you're in T-Dot. So, <laughs> being a little bit more accessible. But one, we want quick, um, but, one quick question. For, for women that are in the industry, because sometimes a lot of people, um, uh, a lot of women, um, is just shy away, um, uh, believe that it needs uh, some kind of external um, validation, most especially when they're just coming in, into the industry. And then they have their family to care for. They have their young, um, young kids to care for. Mm -hmm. How were you able to manage that space when you were just coming up having your daughter and right. being able to juggle everything together um it was a lot my mom my mom and my aunt helped a lot they helped me a lot because of, i mean we i mean my mom and my aunt they owned a home together so my daughter had three moms you know mm -hmm when the challenge came is when I went to New York and um, I worked five jobs and went to school and 
I could no longer be around my daughter at every moment anymore. I had to teach her how to ride the subways by herself at seven years old. And it was a lot because there, I had so many rules for her. Uh, like I had to wean her. It took me about about maybe maybe a couple months, maybe a month and a half or a couple months to wean her to like, okay, mom is going to wait right here. And then you meet me here. And then I'm and like, you know, keep backing up to, okay, I'm going to wait at this station. Okay. I'm going to wait on the other side of this station. It took me a while. And then I also taught her the entire subway. I had the entire New York subway map on the back of her door. And every day we studied every part of it. And if one train wasn't working, what train to take? Because she went to school at Coney Island and then had to go to Manhattan for Alvin Ailey Dance School and then eventually come back home to Brooklyn. But then I also, I was working. So it was just a lot to teach somebody so young, a latchkey kid at seven. But what else could I do? I couldn't, I didn't want to leave her in Canada with my mom because I was scared of the bond breaking. And so I remember it was at the, the beginning of me being in school in, in, in New York. I had had her in Canada and I couldn't focus on any of my studies. And that time I was being taught by Felicia Rashad. And I went to her and said, it's, this is really hard. And she said, go get her, go get her. And I went back to Canada and I got my daughter and I brought her back, I brought her to New York. And I said, I was like, okay, I've got to figure it out. And I eventually I figured out I had a community because once I was like, okay, she's used to dance in Canada. Let me figure out what am I supposed, where am I going to bring her to dance? And then they were like, um, then I heard, oh, Alvin Ailey is the school to bring her to. So I went to Alvin Ailey. I signed her up for Alvin Ailey Dance School. And the moms there kind of rallied around me and said, okay, where's she going to go to school? And I was like, oh, like maybe the neighborhood school. They're like, where do you live? I was like, Brooklyn, Crown Heights. Like, they're like, where? I was like, Crown Heights. They're like, oh, no, honey. Uh-uh. We've got to help you um, have her apply for School of the Arts. You don't want to have your kid going to any school up in New York like that. Not your black kid. And I was like, I don't know, in Canada, like especially the suburbs of Brampton, you can send them to any school because it's not that bad as America, right? And so I was just in, I was just in free fall and just relying on my black sisters, really, truly, to help me with whatever I was pursuing as I was pursuing my dream. I had to make sure that my kid was protected during that. And somehow, the, because I was pursuing my dream and I knew it was right for me and I was doing all the right things that I'm supposed to, and remember working five jobs, the universe somehow put their hands, put on, put their hands on me. God put his hands on me and just, I just knew I was okay. And so, I would have my daughter audition for, for schools. She got into schools and then we chose the school she was going to. And so she had um, the Alvin Ailey kids and I had the moms and I just had a support system. I, it, it just happened. And yeah, and I, I, I couldn't even believe it because years later after I had left New York, another mother was doing the same thing and she was arrested and put in jail for years. Mm. Can you imagine that? Wow. That's dedication. That's how I know God is that he paves my path and I follow. I, I know I'm, I am anointed. Mm -hmm. Th thank you for sharing that. Uh, just talking about that, it was, it was more like a reminder for, for me. Because sometimes people people see me and then just say, maybe she's getting it all easy. Oh, I could, no I easy could, route for me. Oh, yeah. I could remember when my two older kids, before the younger ones came, um, 
they would take the bus home. Mm-hmm. They would take the bus home from school. My mm-hmm. older daughter is just turning 15 um, mm-hmm. next week. But she started taking a bus like over five, uh, five years now. Mm-hmm. So she would take the bus with her younger sister. And um, we had to go teach her how to take the subway, take the mm-hmm. bus, or talk to nobody. Once you get home, call and let us know you're home. Yep, that's so, it. So, yeah, so many things that, you know, that you do as a, as a, as a woman when you are in the space especially when you're trying to follow the path that you feel that is best set for you like your dream yeah it's yeah. it's harder oh yeah it is it's, it's harder hard. but it like hard. right like it's like wow but then i'm telling when you go for it though man the energy in the universe has got you yeah yeah I, I, and then I, you have a story. Then you have a story to help other women come and or men coming up. Mm-hmm. You see, I, I I always tell I always tell young filmmakers coming up and say you need to have a story. So right. don't be afraid to either create one. Not, not, not in a way that you're endangering your life or people around you. But when I say create one, don't be afraid to take that shot. Mm-hmm. When that shot presents itself, don't be afraid. No easy way out. Don't think that somebody's going to put anything on the on the plate for you. Like you said, you have to first stretch your hands out, and then the universe will meet you and just pick you up from there. Mm-hmm. I agree. Wow. But, but you have to move first and you have to stretch your hands. Mm-hmm. So I just want to say thank you for sharing your journey, for sharing your experience. Um, we've all heard, we've learned, we've owned some of some some of your story. I personally I want to speak for myself. I'm owning some of your story. It 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 hasn't been an easy journey. Um some some might see and say, oh you know she had a mom her aunties but there's some part of your story that it was just you and your God. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Like 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 the, the like the New York story. Your 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 mom wasn't there. Your auntie wasn't there. No, nope. and that's where I had to was... learn my independence. That's just where it was yeah. because when when I went after my dream, they were like, "Yeah, the uh, I we you're on your own to pay for it, to live it." But it's like you want to you want to do that? Okay, then you're on your own, and and I took it with strides it's fine it was tough but it's it made me it made me realize that I'm unbreakable yeah keyword unbreakable unbreakable you cannot shake a black woman that prays at night look at the combination ah Nigerian (laughs) Jamaican yeah and then we added a little bit of Canada into it, just a sprinkle. Only because of the uh, citizenship. Uh, <laughs> so that they don't the say we don't want to buy Canadians. You can go anywhere, that's it. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, wonderful, wonderful. I think we, we took more than enough of your time. I thank you that you were patient with us. I really appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. Director Wabai, you just came in. Sorry, sir. We're done. Uh, no, no. I will. Um, okay. I'm okay. gonna send you. I'm gonna, one second. I'm gonna send um, Director Wagai her contact as well, so that he can follow up in whichever way. And okay. uh, if Thank you, you later, I'm. I shared it earlier. If you can't find it in the chat, I'll write it out again. And okay. uh, please, let's feel free. She. He's one of us. She's a, first. She's a black actor. Then she, for Pashiasik. Then she's Nigerian, then she's Jamaican. 
okay yeah. okay <laughs> but um we we really do do appreciate you and um thank you. we thank you i can't say thank you enough i i don't even know what to say anymore and it's i always okay. have to say i feel the love i feel the love so um, I didn't even realize the time. I was like, oh, shoot, I got to go to sleep. Yep, yep, yep. So, I'm up at 4 a.m. 4 a.m. And it's already three minutes to um, 10. It's okay. And you have 60 seconds to wrap up. And I think Obi had a question or comment. We're going to wrap it up by 10 p.m. Okay. You don't got to go home, but I'm going to get you up my line. Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 um, I just want to quickly say, um, Thank you so much. Like I said before, it's um, it's just gonna be a thank you message. Um, continue to to be your authentic self. Continue the planet and continent Africa. Mm -hmm. Await you, you and, <gasps> and all you bring in to into, us. into your mother. I don't want to say your fatherland. I want to say your motherland. Your land. It's your land. <laughs> Everything is yours. I your bring, land. Bring you. <laughs> come, come, in, um, come in and own the space. Thank you. It's your space to own. Um, okay. Director Charles? We are waiting for you. Um, thank God Charles to our boys on the is on the call i think um charles tuning up yeah. with nigeria he's an amazing no he's back he's back okay he's back great yeah. Yeah. he's an yeah. amazing amazing director um you can check him out Aluni can check him out he's oh he's gonna speak now ah <laughs> we've got yeah, I, <laughs> exactly. I should i should round it up thank you so much Aluni <laughs> can. we can thank with you. you walk with you okay charles did you want to say something real quick yeah, I think I met with her online sometime in the past. Um, and we chatted maybe on Instagram or so. I, I can't really mm. remember, but I think I met with her before. But I'll mm. um, get her contact and reach out again now that I'm here. Great, great, great. Yeah. All yeah. these connections, Olunike and all the directors and producers here. <laughs> see me, Obadi Orukomi, if I don't see my name. If I don't yes. see my name <laughs> on contracts, all of you. <laughs> And Christina too, my wonderful co-host Christina looking all fly with a nice red outfit. I was like, ah, where? I represented the Nigerian aspect. She came in on the Caribbean side. So we're good. Um we appreciate everyone. It is now 10 p.m. guys. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Use hand sanitizer. Wear your masks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Love you so Bye, much. everyone. Thank, thank you. you.